road to this championship began in the 1800s, when logging sports originated in the timber camps of North America. As time passed, the sport grew and became synonymous with logging communities. It debuted to the world in the 1970s as part of ABC's Wide World of Sports, and from there spread across the globe, producing a rabid international fan base. A new generation of lumberjacks look to challenge their elders, a sport whose origins reach far back into history. And today, competitors both young and old have come together to compete for the title best lumberjack in the U.S. After months of preparation for this single event, one of these competitors will walk out of here triumphant. Who will it be? It all happens right here, right now, in Milwaukee.
Great to be here in Milwaukee today. Thank you all for being here on this most important day of the year in Lumberjack Sports. Steel Timber Sports 2019, today is the day we find our United States champion. And with that in mind, let's get him out here. A legend in the sport of lumberjack skills. So many world records, so many championships. One of the greatest competitors of all time here on stage today to take us through this entire important competition. Say hi to Dave Jewett. Yeah, you got that right. Hey, that's right. I'm Dave Jewett. They called me Super Dave for the 25 years that I competed in steel timber sports, and I am so psyched to be back here. We are all psyched to be back here at German Fest right here in Milwaukee, the biggest German fest in the country, right back here at the BMO Harris Pavilion. This is steel timber sports final day. If you were here yesterday, that was the semi-final rounds. We had two pools of 10. We narrowed it down to the top 10 today. Five came out of each pool. We're going to have three chopping events. We're going to have three song events. We are going to crown a champion, and I am going to give you the play-by-play -play on the stage. And the cool thing is, CBS is here. They're filming it for a later air date. Check out Steel Timber Sports website for those air dates. We're going to have 16 episodes on CBS and CBS Sports. When you're watching, you will hear these two gentlemen. There they are up there. Cross-cut world record holder. Give a wave. Kevin Holtz. And the golden voice we've heard for 30 years, Tommy Sanders. Thanks, boys. Thank you for being back. So we got 10 competitors, a lot of rules. How are we going to manage these competitors, keep them all in line? We've got two judges representing the international judging team. Give a big round of applause for Andy Hall and Rich Hallett. Now we're not kicking off any timber sports event, especially the championships, without a ceremonial first cut. And helping us out with that, we have some, some very special people representing the Milwaukee Wave. Please give it up for Chad Vandengrift. And also from the Milwaukee Wave, big Wisconsin welcome for Tenzin Rampa. And from Duluth Trading, big, big round of applause for Scott Von Rudin. And the man we don't see enough, but he's making all this happen. He's coming out of Virginia Beach representing International Steel. Please, please give a big round of applause for Roger Phelps. All right, Milwaukee, how are you? Love that sound of freedom. All right, while Super Dave gets our ceremonial first cut people set up, I just wanted to say a few words and just tell you how excited we are to be back here in Milwaukee. You guys are the greatest fans, the most beautiful venue, and hey, it's German Fest. We at Steel love that. So we just wanted to thank you all. You're in for a treat. You know, back. In 1985, we established the Steel Timber Sports Series so that we could find the number one all-around top lumberjack sports athlete. A lot of things have changed over the years. We've gone high-tech, but you know what? This is still the pinnacle, the original extreme sport, and you all are in for a treat. So Dave, what do you think? Are our first cut people just about ready to go? Yep, he's Super Dave, he's laying him in there. He's got it. All right, Milwaukee, you ready to get this started? All right, gentlemen, here's your starting cut. Three, two, one, go! There we go, here it is! There we go, back and forth. Well, they got the coordination going. They're going for a world record in the first cut. And there it is. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. I'm going to throw it back to Super Dave for the rest of the announcements for our opening ceremony. But you're in for a treat, Milwaukee. Thank you.
All right, we've got our top 10 competitors coming out. Let's get right to them. Our first competitor coming from Clifton Springs, New York. Give it up for Matthew Marks. There he is, and all the way from Barnett, Vermont, Calvin the Hurricane Willard. And from Troy, North Carolina, Big Milwaukee, welcome from Mike Slingerland. From Toll House, California, Walt Page. Originally from Hayward, Wisconsin, now residing in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Cassidy Shear. Our newcomer shaking up the timber sports world from North Fork, California, Nate Hodges. From Sevierville, Tennessee, Matt Slingerland. Fourth generation Lumberjack 65250 from Diana, West Virginia, Jason Lentz. And the big guy, we've not seen him here, and you are gonna see him for a long, long time in Timber Sports, a newcomer from Springville, New York, Mark Boquin. And this last gentleman needs no introduction. Six-time Timber Sports National Champion from Grafton, West Virginia, Matthew Cougar. These are your 10 finalists that have made it through the quarterfinal round, made it through the semifinal round, and here they are today at the finals. here first of all I want to congratulate all ten of these gentlemen for making it to the championships that is an amazing achievement you know I'm gonna deviate just very quick and if you'll please join us we've been I've had the privilege of being at the head of steel timber sports for 17 years and the thing that has struck me and as I have really enjoyed the most is that we're a family and I would like to introduce and bring out all of the crew that helps us support that. If they could please join us on stage behind the athletes right now, please. Come on out. Come on out, guys. Come on out. Just line up right behind him. Go ahead. You know, I say we're a family, and I mean that, and I mean that sincerely. This is a, the hardest working crew that it has ever been my privilege to be part of. You know, you look at all that wood, all those stands, all the timing, all the cameramen, and all of that production that goes into that, and over the course of a year, we grow very, very, very close. And so, I do want to take a moment and that is that this year, we did lose one of our family members. Duffy Dolliver was an amazing gentleman. He was a true gentleman. He was a fierce competitor. He was just as fierce in his support of our event. He loved the athletes. He was our chief wrangler. He'd find the guys wherever they were, and he'd bring them out here and make sure they were on time. And he may be a little gruff, but he always had a word of encouragement, a word of advice. He loved this sport probably more than anybody I know. We lost Duffy, but we know that he's here with us today. So please join me in just a moment of silence for one of our family.
Ladies and gentlemen, this competition is dedicated to Duffy Dolliver. And let's have a great one, gentlemen. Good luck. All right, we have six disciplines today. Like I said, two chopping events, two sawing events. The first event of the day will be the underhand chop. You're gonna see it in just a couple moments up on the Jumbotron. And until then, I'm gonna tell you about it. Single points. Don't blink in the underhand chop. This is one of the fastest events in timber sport. The elite athletes will be hitting the log in less than one second per hit. They will chop the front half of the log using their $700 X. After they cut the front half of the log, the transition to the back is seamless. In less than one second, the ax is into the back side of the log. A two and two pattern removing the chip. Then when you get close to the center, you have to be confident. Using precision, accuracy, power, you will drive the log off. Seems dangerous, right? It's actually one of the safest events. And yes, they are wearing a chain mail sock protection underneath their shoes. There you go, that is the underhand chop. It is the first event of the day. What's gonna happen here, we're gonna do the underhand chop. We're gonna do the stock saw, the standing block, single points, then we will get rid of two competitors, narrow the field down to eight. Then we will do springboard, we will do single buck, double points. After that wraps up, we will eliminate two more competitors, narrow it down to six for the final event of the day. The loud, the fast, the hot saw, triple points where anything goes, one cylinder. That's basically the only rule. You have to start it by hand because the shaw will be shut off. Stick around for that, but like I said, triple points, even if you are behind. It does give you the opportunity to catch up and take the title. Here we go, on stand number one from Clifton Springs, New York, Matthew Marks. And on stand number two from Barnett, Vermont, Calvin Willard. 12 and three quarter inch white pine. Well, we started with 20. We are down to 10. Athletes Tommy ready. Sanders and Kevin Holtz here, and Sanders we're going to start it with the timber. underhand three events, Three, Kevin, all two, with the standard one, points, and we go. start Watch this. with Matt Marks and Calvin Willard. Marks on the left, Willard on the right. Yeah, this is going to be a day of attrition. We lose two after the first three disciplines, so these guys are in go mode. We gave Matt Marks a new nickname this morning. He's now known as Meh, no. <laughs> because that's kind of been his attitude going into this, and it's working. He is calm. He's cool. He's collected. He's putting the hits down where he needs to go. He did not have, a, have enough going on there to take down Calvin Willard, though. Calvin Willard spraying a few hits into the backside of that block, but he made it work, muscles through that white pine. Calvin Willard running on some momentum here. He took himself from down in ninth place in the semifinal round all the way into the top five, and he is still performing well. In that semifinal round, he cut the underhand at 22.73. Unofficially, we got him at less than that now at 21.5 or thereabouts, and we await the official time. Let's go back and have a look at Calvin Willard and Matt Marks here going head to head, virtually synchronized chopping. Big piles of chips falling out. Willard is around first. I just, I think he just got more done in the front side of that log. Maybe the axe liked the block a little better, and he was just getting a little bit more done with each swing of the axe. Other than that, they were virtually swing for swing. The first heat of the day, you laid down the time to beat. You just seem to have found a different gear than yesterday. Yeah, well, none of us want to be in the first heat, but uh, somebody's got to do it. Uh, but yeah, we're always trying to figure out what axe to use, how the wood's gonna cut, so we, uh, first two guys gotta 
You've got to show the rest of them what it might cut like. I know. Well, that's the thing. The competitors are saying this wood is exceptionally soft, and sometimes soft, your axe goes in and it's hard to pull it out, meaning you've got about 12 axes to choose from. So today you cut that, you cut it uh, the same wood as yesterday. Did you using a different axe today? Uh, I did. Um, the axes I tried yesterday didn't cut this wood real well. Um, so I tried something a little different, and it, it seemed a little bit better. All right, we'll be seeing you again in the standing block, maybe using that same axe. There you go from Vermont. It's Calvin Willard. Calvin Willard uh, bettering his time from the semifinals. Cut of 20.698 seconds for Matthew Marks, 26.627. Well, Tommy, you see how Calvin Willard was kind of playing that one a little close to the vest there, too. Dave flat out asked me, so oh, did you use a, a different axe today? And there's the opportunity to say, yeah, you know what? I uh, ran a 19 degree, I ran a 17 degree today. But he's playing it close to the vest. As they pointed out, they are the first heat. And there's a monitor back in the competitor's tent. They're hearing what we're saying. They're watching what's going on on the stage. And they just watch that cut. If Calvin kind of let it fly as to what he ran yesterday, what he ran today, well, that's all just evidence in their, in their hand to go out and post a better time than he just did. You're not practicing a little discretion there in his own favor, and who can blame him for that? So Calvin Willard with the lead right now, but four more heats to go as we have the full field again of 10 going through these first three disciplines on the card today. This is the underhand standing block in the springboard chuck. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. This is the underhand and the stock saw. And the standing block. Now we got it. Okay. Mike Slingerland and Walt Page. Mike Slingerland at age 55 qualifying for the top 10 of this championship. Ready. He's been with Steel Timber Sports Stand since the beginning. Walt Page timber. is going to be a tough customer to beat. Three, two, one, go. And we were talking about this earlier today. I sat down with Mike Slingerland just hanging out in the arena before the event started, and he is all smiles. I walked right up to him and said, congratulations, Mr. Finalist. And he said, I know it. Hashtag SFO, short, fat, old. That's what he says. <laughs> Tell you what, though, he's putting on a good chop. It's not going to be enough to take Walt Page down. Got himself a little bit pinched in on the back of that block. Stepped those hits in, ran out of real estate. I think he's just gunning a little too hard in that underhand. He is the professor. He is a technician. He knows how to take these blocks apart, and he just got ahead of himself on that one. It's like Walt Page has got that one. Uh, Rich Hallett has signed off on it on official time, about 21.2. He cut to 21.8 and changed yesterday. So if the uh, unofficial holds, it's an improvement. Here's a look at Walt Page. A real great cut. I, I can't say it enough. I have absolutely enjoyed watching Walt Page evolve from a collegiate athlete to a professional athlete, and he's really become an advocate for the sport, looking at the rules, looking at the setup. His development just in the past five years or so has just been epic. Says you only had one block to cut out there. What's going on? Well, you know, sometimes we set these blocks up in a stand and then they come back out and they get in a different stand and they don't quite uh, sit the same way they did when we set them up. So um, I had to trim a little bit on my foothold to make it nice and flat to, to chop on, so. You know, you came all the way from California. You have white pine on the West Coast. What's the West Coast white pine like the East Coast white pine? How do they differ? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a subtle difference. Um, you, 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 a lot of guys call it kind of doughy, kind of like the difference maybe like cookie dough and I don't know, something that's a little bit firmer than that. But, um, you know, it, it's a subtle difference, but it, there definitely is a difference between the two. All right, thanks for your time. We've heard white pine called melons. First time I've heard it called cookie dough, but there you go. We'll check out the time of Walt Page in just a second. We got an official time for Walt Page of 20.81. So, yeah, that's an improvement over a semifinal round time in the underhand chop. Mike Slingerland had a little more trouble with that one, still awaiting his official time. Walt Page, all of us from the sidelines, Kevin. Uh, sit and speculate on who could be a factor today, who could challenge the uh, the six-time champ looking for his seventh, Matt Goger. And Walt's name comes up uh, in, in certain ways, in certain ways of discussion, in that he, he is one of these guys who doesn't seem phased by whatever level he's competing at. He gives it the same great effort every time. 
Yeah, Tommy, you've used the term a couple times. He's a flatliner. He is. It's just sort of that even keel, consistent whatever. Doesn't get flapped, doesn't get flustered, just gets out there and does his job. And, and we've said it for years, all these championship years, that is what has made Matt Koger so dominant in this sport. Even when he runs into trouble, he just sort of rolls through it and keeps going. So that, that mental maturity that Walt Page is showing at his relative young age is really paying out for him. We look at number four there, Cassidy Shear, at stand number one. Cassidy going up against the, uh, the sensation, really, you have to say, of the semifinals. Nate Hodges, his first year in Steel Timber Sports. And he blew it away, won three of the six disciplines yesterday. He's a strong, ready. strong competitor. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, sensation is one word. I call it an anomaly. I just, <laughs> I, I, I thought yesterday we'd see the wheels come off the cart for Nate Hodges, and he just, he didn't just hold it together. He accelerated. He is a bit behind Cassidy Shear. Cassidy Shear in semifinals yesterday was like a man running downhill. He was good at some points and fell on his face at others. But here oh. he is. Look at this race between Cassidy Shear and Nate Hodges. What a finish from these two. Oh, no, no, no. Stand two under review. All right. All right, well, let's start speculating, Tommy, here. I'm going to say that if yeah, it's technically. under review, it's something that's not a clear issue. It looks like he's got all of his footholds intact. I'm guessing it's going to be a jumped gun. They're heading over to the screen to take a look at things. Well, let's listen to the start. That'd be the way, one way to try to identify whether he jumped the starter pistol. He was fine on that. Maybe worth looking at, but Rich Hell is already on his way back out. After review, we've determined that both cuts are good. All right, big sigh of relief for Nate Hodges. Yeah, Cassidy, we, we, it's so hard to start with you. You know, you started as a log roller, as a speed climber up in Hayward, Wisconsin. And you said when you were 14 years old, you started cutting underhands. You actually cut yourself, but it didn't phase you. Now you're one of the top ranked underhand cutters in the world. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy chopping underhands. It was the first chop I learned, first chop I got good at. Oddly enough, it's kind of my weakest chop right now. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that cut. Maybe could have gotten one head, hit, hit earlier, but. I kept the axe moving, never stuck. I'm content with that cut. And you couldn't have gotten more close to the gun. They checked his time. I thought you guys hit at the same time. And the scary thing is he just dominates the stock saw. That's the next event coming up. Great cut, though, Cass. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Woo! Yeah! Cassidy Shear just managing to shade Nate Hodges there. Shear's official time, 19.195. Ahead of Nate Hodges, 19.434. Two good cuts right there. Nate Hodges cutting right about what he did in the semis, but Cassidy making about a two-second improvement there. Yeah, I mentioned it kind of quick in the cut there, but the uh, watching Cassidy Shear in semis yesterday was like watching a man run downhill. At some points, he was going exceptionally fast, running like the wind, and at other points, he was tumbling and rolling. Springboard was a tumble and roll. Yeah. Stock saw <laughs> was a huge face plant. Somehow, though, he held it all together, and he's here in the finals. Next up, a couple of big hitters coming up here. Matt Slingerland, part of a multi-generational lumberjack performing family, and ditto for Jason Lynch, four generations in Jason's family. Athletes ready. Lynch on the right, Stands Slingerland on the left. Timber. Three, two, one, go! These guys literally grew up chopping wood together. You know, as you mentioned, Tommy, multi-generational family. They've heard a lot of the same lessons over and over from their own fathers. And look at this, turned in sync. Matt Slayland dangerously close to that foothold, and the ax hangs up. That gave Jason Lentz just a hair, just a window of opportunity. No! Matt Slingerland, speaking of hair, that mullet blowing <laughs> in the breeze, knocks the block off just ahead of Jason Lentz.
Matt Slingerland cut it in 18.69 in the semifinals. His unofficial time would suggest that this one is just a hair slower. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, so right out of the gate, they're together. A two and two pattern. It's looking good. But Slingerland's pace just starts to run away from Jason Lentz. They both turn at the same time. There's that hang up I was talking about. And this is where the where it's absolute go time. Matt, you did a little fist pump there, then you looked at me and you shook your head. You drove, you really defied physics with the amount of wood you drove there. Would you do it the same again? Uh, of course not, Dave. Uh, had a great front. It was really good wood. I just got a little, little excited in the back. I wanted to get it off fast. I should have went one over and but it came off a little faster, but it's all good. Hey, of course, you're chasing your old-time rival, Jason Lentz. Yeah, that'll, that'll make you go fast. All right, hey, good luck. There you go, Matt Slingerland. <laughs> Matt and Jason, both part of uh, father-son combinations who have made it incredibly to this 10-man field of finalists for the championship in Steel Timber Sports for 2019, waiting on those official times right now and there it is Matt Slingland with 18.523 taken over the lead just ahead of Cassidy Shear. Nate Hodges hangs in there in third. Jason Lentz with a 22.99 it's certainly not his best that is a uh, it's about five seconds slower than he cut it in the semis. A new face and a very familiar face on the left. That is Mark Boquin. Made his own splash yesterday as a first timer here in the championships and going up against the probably the toughest test he'll face all day six times. Six consecutive national championships on the line today for Matthew Koger. In an underhand record. Athletes it's ready. Right in there too. He's got the Stand underhand record. Six time, timber. six time national champ. Three, two, up one. Against Go. First year competitor. Oh man. And we saw this a lot yesterday. Mark Boquin is right on those goes. He's looking for. Oh, he's around already. I, oh boy. I am worried that Mark Boquin may have taken out a loan on the front side of that log and he's going to have to pay oh, it back. Oh, yeah. Matt Conger made him pay it back. An unofficial 15 2 5 showing on the boards. Going for his seventh consecutive U.S. title, Matt Koger from West Virginia. Right there, just showing his incredible consistency. Yesterday in the semis, he cut within five one hundredths of his unofficial time now. Look at the opening blows from Matt Koger. Went way low on his first opening blows, drew a huge slab of wood. At this point, boy, excuse me, Mark Boquin is way around, but Matt has just done so much work on the front side of that log. Tons of slope, blows it apart. You know, Matt Kogar, he's such a nice, approachable guy. We never see him mad, but I saw when you stuck that first hit, you couldn't pull it out. Uh, you didn't look happy, and all of a sudden, the Matt Kogar we've all seen. <laughs> yeah, it kind of gets you a little upset and stirred up, and you're like, yeah, I want to really nail this thing now. And uh, Yeah, just, it, it kind of threw me off guard, just the hair, you know. I put the axe in, and it went really well. I mean, I knew that was the axe I wanted to use. And... Uh, it was the right choice. I just probably wasn't quite prepared to, to handle it. Yeah, we've seen you break records. We've seen you break the standing block record. You own this national record right here. Do you know it's a record log, or you just say, this is my day, I'm going for it? Uh, you kind of just have to take it as it comes, you know? Like, sometimes these records are unexpected and it just happens on the day, and, and you just uh, try to prepare for that moment that it, that it happens. All right, we're going to let you get ready for the stocks. Now, there he is, the best in the country, maybe the best in the world, Matt Koger. And Matt Koger's official time of 14.46, almost a full second faster than he cut it in the semifinals. There are your official times and finishes right there. Matt Koger on top by a wide margin over Matt Slingerland, Cassidy Shear, Nate Hodges. We look now starting to look at that number eight position. Nine and ten will not pass after the next two disciplines are done. And we will hit the next bliss discipline when we return to Milwaukee for the championships right after this. Coming and close the can. Duluth trade.
trading. Highly capable clothing. Only at Duluth Stores and DuluthTrading.com. Legend has it, a cold-blooded beast roams these woods at night. And if whispers around campfires are true, it's covered in bony armor from head to tail. And its eyes glow in the dark. Through land and water, nothing can stop it. But if you happen to spot it, Probably too late. The legend is back in black. The Gator XUV 590M Special Edition. Nothing runs like a deer. Steel Timber Sports, Steel Chainsaw. Competitors on an even playing field. This is the Stock Saw. The Steel Stock Saw. Two competitors going head to head with identically tuned MS661 chainsaws. After a 15 second warm up, all eight fingers must be crossing that line. On go, with speed, they retrieve the saw. With precision, they enter the saw into the wood. Listening to the RPMs, feeling the saw, cutting through the wood, severing that first clean disc. Then, the perfect transition, and again, with precision, entering the log for the upcut. Hopefully seeing two complete discs on the ground, and of course, this four inch line remaining for a leading putt. There emerges Walt Page. He'll be going up against Calvin Willard. The first heat of the Stock Saw competition, the second of these three disciplines, which will uh, decide the first cut. Two competitors will be dropped after these first three disciplines. And right now, Walt Page in seventh place, Calvin Willard in sixth place. Walt Page, the forester from Toll House, California, works up in the Sierras. Calvin Willard works in the woods as well. Comes to us from Barnett, Vermont. Page ran 11.18 in the semifinals. Calvin Willard, shade slower, 11.43. Hey, Tommy, remember that time we had 10 guys all post times within one second of each other? <laughs> That's remember right. that time, Tommy? Yeah, it seems just only like yesterday. Oh, wait a minute. It was yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. Yeah. That was Pool A action. Pool B was pretty tight as well, not quite as tight. And it, that's just where we're at with this stock saw discipline. These guys are looking to shave hundreds of seconds off saws. their time because that might make the difference between fourth and third or second and first, or in the case of Pool A yesterday, first and last. Yeah. It was absolute insanity. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Advantage Walt Page on the start, just a little bit quicker to the block. These guys are together though at the finish. That means Calvin Willard's moving more through the wood. Oh, Calvin Willard asked just a little too much of that saw at the end. And Tommy, that's what we've been talking about. These guys are pushing for every fraction of a second they can. And a lot of it they're trying to gain, or a portion of it they're trying to gain at the top of that log. Take another look here as these guys are up into the wood. Actually, it was closer at the start than I thought. I thought Walt had a little more on him than he did. Great switch over from Calvin Willard. Here's where trouble goes on. You can see Walt Page loads up and rips oh. through. Calvin just asked a little too Both much. Both cuts are good. Take a look at Calvin Willard and that little problem at the top from another angle. Oh, just so close, so close. Walt Page on stand number one. Spends a lot of time with a chainsaw in his hand. 
And that ear, hand, eye coordination really paid out here today on stand number one. Hanging out in about the mid 10 seconds, but got the feeling we're gonna see some numbers below that. And good for Walt Page too. Yesterday he had an issue, caught the chain break on the way down. Unfortunately, didn't activate it, but still rattles your cage a little bit. Well, unofficially, Walt has uh, improved by a mile <laughs> over his effort in the semis. He's gonna be three quarters of a second faster than he was yesterday if the unofficial time proves to be close to the official time. And there it is, a 10.46. Yeah, he got three, an 11.18 yesterday. Three quarters of a second in this discipline is like three quarters of a year. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that is an epic improvement. Something like the springboard, you'll see, you know, guys will gain 10 seconds, they'll lose five seconds, whatever. In this discipline, every hundredth of a second makes a big difference. Coming up next, Mike Slingerland versus Nate Hodges. We're just getting to know this very, very outstanding performer. Yeah, th this is just, this is ridiculous. I gotta be honest, I didn't give this guy nearly enough credit coming in here yesterday. Yes, he was number one qualifier in the Western region, but you know what, that's kind of a home field advantage. I said, you know what, get any of these new guys under the lights, the camera, the action. But when he came out for this springboard, he cracked a smile over at Mike Slinger. I said, you know what, he's just relaxed. And he talked about that. He said, you know, I'm on the stage with my friends. This is just another competition. And that attitude and his speed carried him yesterday. Put on an absolute clinic and put a lot of guys on high alert. Yeah, he won three of the six disciplines yesterday in Pool A. It was a tour de force, per tour, tour de force performance. Yeah, I had that right. And uh, man, what a job he did out there. This guy who's 35 years old, maybe a bit of a dream delayed, but boy, he is living the dream right now, enjoying his first Steel Timber Sports Championships. And he's doing all the right things. He's putting in the time, he's getting the right tools. He is showing the dedication to this sport that really pays out, that really makes the difference. Nate's going up against, uh, well, Nate Hodges has got a, we mentioned this yesterday. He has got a serial number, which indicates the, uh, the sequence he's in as far as competitors who have joined Steel Timber Sports through the years, a serial number 466. Going up against Mike Slingerland with a serial number of 25, one of the original Steel Timber Sports guys. Still getting it done. Mike and I talked a little bit about that when we are just kind of hanging out in the auditorium this morning. And I said, you know, you're, you're badge number 25, ID number 25. We're getting guys that are in the, the 400 range. Some speculation about whether that badge number comes with an expiration. Warm up your saws. At this stage, if you're making yeah. it to the finals, buddy, <laughs> yeah. you just keep going. Yeah, that's right. You are not past that expiration date yet. Mike Slingerland cut a 10.64 yesterday to win Athletes the semi-final stock Stand dog competition. to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Well, and he is one of the guys that is just an absolute student of the sport, he has cut hundreds and hundreds of cuts. Look at how flawless that changeover was from Mike Slingerland. Wow! <laughs> he is gonna be right there with Walt Page, maybe ahead of Walt Page. I know the unofficial clock shows that he's past Walt Page, but Both cuts are good. Mike 
Slinger is going to be the winner in this heat right here, and he's cut so many. It's at such a high level. He knows every way to get the job done. Well, he mentioned earlier today he is one of the last uh, of two guys that get on the inside of that log as opposed to standing on the outside of the log. Big difference for Mike Slingerland. Like we said, this is such a, a test of nerves. And Mike, you got done. You looked over me, shrugged your shoulders, and you said, oh, that went all right. Yeah, yeah, it went all right. Uh, one little mistake, it probably cost me about a tenth, maybe 15 hundredths. But uh, overall, you know, a good start, good switch. What's interesting is you said, you, you watched Calvin in the earlier heat, and you said that was the same spot that Calvin laid on the saw, a little heavy? Well, I, I did the same thing. I did a little earlier than he did, so the wood was bigger, so I was able to recover a little quicker than he was able to recover, uh, which, which helped me out. So. But it was the same mistake, just getting a little too greedy, uh, being a little too aggressive with the saw. How important is it to train with your fellow athletes in this stock saw event? Well, it's really important because uh, you don't really know how well you're going if you don't have anything to compare it to. So, you know, I got to thank Wood Miser for giving me the opportunity to, to do some of that training with a, a bunch of different uh, timber sports athletes. And, and it's really helped me, uh, you know, reach the, what little potential I have. Thanks for your time. Mike Slingerland. Now that's experience when your brain can measure 15 one hundredths of a second. You can tell, and I guarantee he's not going to be far off of it. Well, and, and, and he may not know that from that experience, but I know they're videotaping all those sessions. They're comparing all those sessions, and they know what a bobble will cost him, what a, what a fan on the, on the changeover will cost him, what a chain break grab will cost him. And again, Tommy, you hear what he's talking about, tenths? Yeah, maybe 1500s. Just <laughs> well, his official time, you see it right there, 1041. Uh, last time around in the semifinals, he cut a 1064. He wasn't even close. He was 14 right, one hundredths of right. a second, not 15 one hundredths yeah. of a second. All right, Mark Boquin, another look at Mark Boquin, who we got our first look at yesterday. As far as these championships go, big man, powerful man from New York going up against the most powerful man in the United States six years running, Matthew Coker. Mark had a slow start yesterday, did not get a good time in the stock saw, found himself at the bottom of the group of 10 through the first two or three disciplines, but boy, he poured the coals on at the last and made it easily into the top five. Yeah, he and Calvin Willard were have, on parallel tracks yesterday with, uh, with rough starts and it is if you've if you've watched this show if you've been around this sport at all you know how hard it is to dig yourself out of a steel championships point deficit mm. and and rally back so that's that's a sign of a true champion in the making warm up your saws <laughs> it's how, there was a moment right there i don't know if anybody noticed it but that was almost a game ender right there for from uh mark Boquin. The uh, judge called warm up your saws. He almost fired the saws, and he didn't have his uh, his ear protection Athlete in ready. place. Ooh. And that's Stands that's a DQ. To your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh bobble for oh. Boquin. Wow. Double whammy for Mark Boquin. Matt Coger is not waiting around, but there must have been trouble for Coger as well, because Boquin is reeling him in. That that oh. came down. I, I gotta watch this again. All right. I was I was so focused on the bobbles on stand one. Something had to have happened on stand two, or or Mark Boquin just reeled him in at a sick pace. I I don't know how Mark Boquin reeled him in. He grabbed a handful of chain break, double clutched the start of that. You can see the the, the partial cut there at the top, and then this so, race came closer right, than I ever would have thought. Well, I think Matt Coger got him, but just just barely, just barely. Time time stops when the when the Take disc is the, severed. Yeah, look for uh, Matt Coger there. I mean, I I don't know. That looked clean and fine to me. <laughs> I got Mark Boquin. I love this guy. He comes on. I go. What, what do you got in your mouth? That the, the the proper safety apparel is ear, eye, and leg protection. You watching hockey lately? You got a mouth guard. Well, they wouldn't let me eat food on stage, so this is the second best. No, I, don't know, I think it helps me at least mentally. It feels makes me feel more precise. So, to me, it helps. 
You know, absolutely, and you just shocked the Timber Sports world yesterday, making the finals and your first appearance at Steel Timber Sports. What does it feel like to be here on Championship Day? It feels amazing. I can't even put the right words to describe it. It's awesome. I'm just super stoked to be here and happy to be a part of this and compete against these amazing guys. It's awesome. Hey, there's a little trouble on the start of that stock slot. Not a big deal. Your big, fast event, the standing block's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to standing block. Hopefully I do a little bit better than yesterday, so... <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, we'll let you go. We'll let you get ready. There it is, Mark Boquin. We're going to see more of this guy. Well, Mark Boquin did not actually <laughs> defeat Matthew Coger there. Matt, Matt nosed him out by a few one hundredths of a second. As a matter of fact, Matthew Coger cut it a little faster than he did in the semifinals. That's not good news for everyone else in this field right here, but uh, he's not uh, usually delivering good news to those guys on a year-to-year on -year basis, but uh, good effort from both and good racing. Yeah, a ridiculous effort from Mark Boker. I don't know how he came out that close to Matt Coger uh, with, with that rough of a start. That was a pretty insane catch-up. Coming up next is going to be Matt Slingerton versus Cassidy Shear. And as you mentioned, Kevin, Cassidy Shear, a, a man rolling down a hill haphazardly and, and a little bit uh, random as far as his results went. Some of them just outright surprising. Yeah, first board on his springboard, he, he had a terrible pocket. You can see there it broke up the side of the tree. He stuck with it. I mean, he's like cat-like reflexes. All the years of log rolling and speed climbing paying off here. And he gets his axe stuck in there, gets up on top of the tree. If we take a look at the single buck. He has really been cutting like a house of fire. He had a little bit of hang up there at the bottom, but certainly not anything that was able to, to really obliterate him. And then, then he goes to play a safe bet, runs his, uh, his production modified chainsaw, thinner chain, thinner curve, easier to handle, safe bet, get through to the finals. Well, then he posts a, oh, oh, no, 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 you don't do that. Here's what you don't do. You don't point the running chainsaw out at the crowd, or you get one of those, a yellow flag. So we watch Cassidy Shear with the chain spinning, the saw running. He turns the saw, it's pointed out at the crowd while he's checking his discs. Now here's the thing, you would never do that with an open modified saw because you can't hold it in one hand and spin right. it around. Exactly. So maybe that safe bet was really what was gonna bite him. In the end, he recouped, he had enough points, he made it through to the finals. He knows how fortunate he is to be here today and he is gonna put on a show. Made it by the slightest of margins when he really had it in the bag going into the final discipline. But hey, sometimes you gotta watch out for those guys, the guys who just barely make it in. Sometimes they are motivated above and beyond everyone else. And Cassidy Shear already having a good day so far. Good performance in the underhand. He'll be going up against a tough customer though, Matt Slingerland. Got the feeling we're gonna see a pretty serious race here. Both these guys are technicians. Both these guys, you, you see tape measures coming out, cram marks going on, foot positioning. They're really going through every detail of what's gonna happen here for the next 10 or 11 seconds. Cassidy had a good cut yesterday in the semis, 11.06, almost down there into the 10, so very close. Matt Slingerland was in the 10s at 10.71. Warm up your saws. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Both these guys up, feet locked to that stage. You don't see a lot of shuffle, you don't see a lot of movement. They want to keep their body positions the same so they're clean and consistent through the cut. Wow. <laughs> Call that one. Matt Slingerland had him at every turn, every transition until the last quarter of that disc. It was a great race right there. This guy's showing times in that mid 10 seconds. Look at Matt Slingerland, quicker, cleaner to the block than Cassidy Shear. Let's watch the switch. I say Matt Slingerland oh, was him. quicker, cleaner through that switch than Cassidy Shear Both was. Cuts. Cassidy Our Shear good. is beating him through the wood. Absolutely parallel with that saw blade, parallel to the ground just at the end, wow. does it? 
Does it arc I'm us? not calling that. Uh-uh. So you come out the next afternoon and you sweep the field. How important is it to have big confidence going into an event where it's really just ear high, ear high hand coordination, not really a muscle event? I uh, know it, it's super important to be confident in the stock saw. So, I mean, guys get get caught in the stock saw at hole where they have a bunch of bad runs, they lose their confidence. I mean, it's an event that anybody can win any given day if you have the right cut. So to come into it and be confident with your routine and, and know what kind of pressure you want to put in the saw and, and just be, be zen with the saw, you know, use the force, that, uh, that really works. There you go. And you know what, Matt was in the woods just ahead of you. It's tough to keep up with him, but you just found that sweet spot. You came up, caught him. I don't know who won the heat. We're going to see in a second, though, Cap. Yeah, no, I, I just I always tell myself smooth is fast. Try to be smooth, nothing else. And uh, yeah, that that was a cut that I'm pretty happy about. There you go, piece of cake. That's a stock saw event. We'll wait on the results. Well, he called upon the force, so we'll see if that was the difference yeah. maker in this uh, very important heat. I did of the see stock Yoda saw. walking around backstage somewhere. I think, I'll be darned. So maybe they're they're having a little yeah. powwow. They're going to be looking at this one for a little while. I, I have a feeling that was so very close. No, I mean, we just we watched a replay on our monitor, and I'm not calling it. Oh, no, I'm not touching no, that. That. Was, that was as close as they get. Likely two one hundredths, if that much, separating those two efforts. Another beautiful day here in Milwaukee. Just a perfect summer day as our official scores pop. Hey, all of five one hundredths of a second. No, no, excuse me. No, excuse me. One one hundredth of a second separating Matt Slingerland victorious over Cassidy Shear and that heat. 10.47, 10.48 right there. Mike Slingerland still on top. Mike Slingerland, father of that man right there, Matt Slingerland. He'll take it though. Matt had a little trouble with his hot saw at Final the end of the competition yesterday. Looking to get his saw straightened out today for sure, and that was a good effort and a great race. Final heat, top two seeds in the stock saw. There he is, Jason Lentz. Jason Lentz, who you say is a vastly improved year-to-year -year guy. Just, just keep watching him. Every year he gets better. Yeah, and, it, and it's not – I don't think that Jason Lentz has learned anything, you know, remarkably new. I think it's really his mental state. It's his mental outlook. He's maturing. And, and that level of maturation, that calm, that, that becoming a student of the sport, um, he's not even as physically big as he has been in the past, but he's just doing the right things, and he's got a much better outlook, I think, as he's, he's approaching these events. And I think this is evidence of it. Event is such a mental event, and this is where he's Warm top seed. He's running with Matt Marks in, in heat number five in the Steel Timber Sports Championships. Matt Marks had the best stock saw time of all the semifinals yesterday. Pool A and B, 10.46. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Wow, very quick to the wood for Matt Marks. Jason Lentz is going to have to reel him in. Look how far ahead he is at the switch. Wow. Oh, what a oh. nut. Look at that unofficial oh. time. Matt Marks may well have broken 10 seconds. That's almost unthinkable. Considering what the scores have been this week. Yeah, he knows it. Unofficially 10.06. Watch this. Look at how fast he was on the first cut, getting that saw to the block. Clean, thin, straight cut. Rips the top off. Beautiful work from Matt Marks. Now we got to extend his nickname. Matt the meh, but awesome, but awesome. With stock saw. <laughs> Both cuts Marks. are All right, good. we're getting a little long with that. Both cuts are good. It's a under earth guy. You bring uh, New York toughness. You said you've been home working on your hay field. You've been baling hay. You haven't had much time to train, but you had enough time to grow the Timber Sports mustache. And this guy knows how to run a stock saw. You want to give up some secrets? Uh, well, s secrets don't make friends, Dave, so I don't have a lot to give up, honestly. But uh, I'd like to thank my wife and my support group and uh, 
I'm, I'm really happy with what Steel has done here. And German Fest is awesome. And uh, I'm having a great time. So thank you, everybody, for coming out. And enjoy the day. All right, we're going to wait on his time. Mad Marks. Look at that. Got a lot of uh, Timber Sports activity going on outside the arena here as well. We got some, some climbing, we got some log rolling. There's your official time for Matt Marks. Look at that six one thousandth of a second. He missed going under 10, but just an absolutely preemptive time. He blows away the field here in Milwaukee. Matthew Marks, your champion in the stock saw. Tell you what, Matt Marks is getting a lot of pat on the backs and attaboys back in the competitor's tent because there is nobody back there that can doubt that was an exceptional cut. Nice run from Matt Marks. We say again, Lake Michigan at its finest today. Pretty nice little breeze blowing out there today. The sailboats are having a fun time. Cruises are running, so everything is just right about perfect to enjoy this day. And now the all-important Steel Timber Sports overall points. Matt Slingerland on top with 20 points. Cassidy Shear two behind him. And there's your defending champ, Matthew Koger, with 17. But the real story down at the bottom, at the end of this next discipline coming up right here, well, two of our uh, two of our competitors will take their exit. Right now, if it was right now, it'd be Mark McQuinn and Calvin Willard. So those two guys are going to be fighting their way up into the top eight if they can possibly manage it through our final or third discipline before we do the cut and we change the points as well. It's going to be the standing block and we'll have it for you just moments away. Big air show going on here in the Milwaukee area as well. Lots of great military planes passing over. Some of them going very, very fast and, and very, very loud. The only thing that could possibly compete with hot saws that are being warmed up back there. And it is a... Uh, it is an oral uh, experience, to say the least, to come to German Fest today. Just got word. I'm going to show you something pretty incredible in just a moment here. There is the new stock saw record. Kevin, explain how these records work at 10.006 for Matthew Marks. I'll tell you how the record works. Just do it fast. Faster than everybody else. Just, ever, just, no one's ever done just it. Just be the fastest that can <laughs> ever. Uh, just that's huge, huge, huge. Congratulations to Matt Marks. Yeah, he's taking a bow right now. Very nice. Good stuff for Matthew Marks. Can't rest on your laurels long, though, because we got to keep going on into our third discipline of the day, the deciding discipline for our first cut in these national championships. So how about that? Getting the news about the... Yeah, uh, there he is. He had to come out and take a bow. He'd probably be the last guy to want to come out and do that, but well, he is, he's happy to do it today, man. That's an accomplishment. Well, and he's not coming out to take a bow. He's coming out to cut a standing yeah, That's block. right. Yeah, he was out <laughs> here anyway. So talk about getting a little wind in your sails running into this standing block. But again, like you said, you can't rest on your laurels. That was the last discipline. It's over. It's done. It's old news already. Yeah, Put he's got the stock saw away. Grab your axe. Here we go, boys. Yeah, he's got to take on Mike Slinger, the first heat of the standing block chop. They are the ninth and tenth seed. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Well, this will be an interesting matchup. Both these guys I tend to put in the underhand cutter bracket more than the standing block cutter bracket. So we should have a pretty tight race on our hands. Looks like Matt Marks is going to do a couple extra hits. What a beautiful front face from Matt Marks. Mike Slingerland is looking to drive that, but he has acres of wood on the far side facing the crowd. Oh, he's there got it, it though. Is. He finally tears it off. Oh, real bad oh, situation there for Matt Marks. Good chop for Mike Slingerland, looking to be, uh, at least unofficially, way better than his cut in the semifinals. Have a look. 
Now here you get a great shot at both of the opening faces from these guys. You see there, uh, Mike Slingerland stepping down, kind of pinching in the near side of that log. Puts one up, driver in, gets out of it. He was out of cuttable wood on the near side of that log. Kind of had to bail out of there and get into the back side of the log. You look at Matt Marks, though, down the line there in the blue shirt, there's a big wall of wood there. That's a big open bit of fresh air that when he's on the back side, he can drive that ax through into that fresh, clean air. Mike Slingerland, the frustration as he looks for those last fibers. Really not a lot of free space to drive that axe through into, and he knows that he's shaking his head. Still and all a little bit better than his effort in the semifinals, and he was able to win that heat right there. A little bit of heat today in Milwaukee, but they got a breeze that sort of takes care of that. A good stiff one today. Everybody having a big time at German Fest. A lot of them right here in the arena with us. Crowd that keeps growing moment by moment. A lot of things to do out here. There are your official times right there. Mike Slingerland, 24.27. And Matthew Marks, apparently setting a world record, kind of takes it out of a guy. Didn't quite get his best effort there. In the standing block with 29-3-6. I think one of the interesting things for Matt Marks would be if he can, I mean, obviously he's in good shape going into the first elimination. He's fair well, a fair ways up the ranking. He's not looking at what, you know, being in one of those last two positions to get eliminated in the first round. He can stay alive to the hot saw. He has been epic with that hot saw. Man. It could really, really mess things up here at the end of the day for some folks. Here we go, Calvin Willard. Orange Athletes and ready. red. Stand to it's going your up timber. against Mark Boquin. Three, two, one, go! Willard qualified from the Southern Qualifier from the Northeast, Mark Boquin. They are both around into the backside of this log. A lot of wood still in the front of Calvin Willard's log, but they are feeling the pressure to go. Top two, there it is, wow. Calvin Willard! Says, I'm not out of this yet. Don't talk about the bottom two to me. Super effort from Calvin Willard. Much faster unofficially than his effort in the semifinals. Calvin Willard finding a little something there. Look at the backside of the block here for Calvin Willard. One and one draws a big, huge chip. Attack those corners. Gets into that mushy stuff in the middle. Watch as he turns to drive this thing. Gets it near, punches it far, leaves that pig's ear standing on the far side of the log. Excellent effort from Calvin Willard as he tries to dig himself out of this point deficit. You're flying. What's going on with you? You went in the back side. I thought you were driving it up, then you put an up hit near. What do you think, you needed that or no? Uh, I don't think so now looking back on it. Uh, you know, my fire driver on the front wasn't quite as good as they wanted it to be, so that's why Took the extra up in the near in the back. Let's talk real quick about fitness. Do you have to hit the gym much? I know you play soccer. You tap maple trees. I said, how many trees did you tap? You go, oh, about 10,000. So you are constantly in the woods staying fit. Is that true? It is. Uh, but I make my wife do most of the work. <laughs> well, now that I brought her up, I would like to give her a thanks for her being here and my family supporting me. Um, but yeah, we do make maple syrup, my family and I, and uh, you know, it's a family operation and it's a lot of work. All right. Hey, good job though. There he goes, hard to get him to talk, but he's a very, very interesting guy, great soccer. Calvin Willard, great competitor from New England. We had a great tribute earlier before we started to another great New England competitor, uh, 
supporter, worker on the Steel Timber Sports Series, one of the guys that just held it together, kept it going. Maple uh, syrup producer as well. Duffy Dolliver. Yeah, he was. He, plenty, plenty of syrup produced by that, that man from uh, Vermont, Duffy Dolliver, uh, near and dear to all of us, just a great sense of humor. Yes. Uh, above and beyond, which endears yes. us the most to him and a great worker as well and very knowledgeable of the sport. Yeah. Great hand. We, we sure miss him. Duffy is uh, dearly, dearly missed by all around here. He was a fixture, and uh, he, he was never the guy that was at the center of the stage in the spotlight, but he was always the guy that was working hard, getting the job done, and, and just a, a tremendous, tremendous human being. Well, there they are, next two competitors. We're going to rock it. These guys are going to rock the stage for sure. Jason Lentz and Matt Slingerland. Jason Lentz on the rail left, Matt Slingerland on the right. You got to love watching these guys square off against each other. Athletes ready. Stand, Stand down to your timber. Up. Three. Jason Lentz sees something he doesn't like. Waves his hand. Yeah, when you're hitting that block as hard as Jason Lentz is, you need that thing shored up, secured, wedged, bolted, dogged, whatever you got to do. Any wiggle, any movement. Just a, a fraction of an inch costs you that much energy in terms of the penetration of the ax. Jason Lentz got a 19-1-1 in the semifinals. Matt Slingerland an 18-6-4. So these guys are pretty evenly Athletes matched. Ready. We're looking forward to a Stand great race. To your timber. Well, they Three, also just saw two, Calvin Willard one, post a really go. solid time, 17.21. They now know what the timber can give. Look at the slab of wood falling off the face of Jason Lentz's block. He knows he's got a melon. He's around to the backside. Axe hang for Matt Slingerland. That axe is not liking the block, at least in wow. the opening side. Oh, Jason Lentz. Sub-15 unofficially. That is a strong, strong statement right there for Jason Lentz. You know, these guys are watching, they're listening, they're learning. They, they saw what Calvin Willard did. They heard him talk about maybe not needing that last up chip hit. Look at Jason Lentz. He wades way into the front of this block in a hurry. He's there. Big up drivers around to the back. I didn't get to see him open the back side of this block, but he just tore the front of that log apart. I can't repeat what he just said. I beat him in a standing block last year and he goes, uh, that's for you, Dave. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, man, that was, a, that was my best block by far, so had to make, make do with it. Well, you know, we talk about fast saws. We talk about fast competitors. Brian Wansley acquired these logs. He said they'll be fast this year. To you, what is a fast log? Well, uh, not very many hits is a fast log. Uh, also, a lot of uh, moisture in it. Free, moves well. Wood gets out of my way. I'm going to let you get out of my way. He's a big guy. A big round of applause. Jason Lentz taking the lead in the standing block. Have another look at it. Boy, that was, you're right. That was a melon, Kevin. Yeah, you can see as he went into his, his uh, last round of down drivers, there was a lightning bolt crack that formed just jagged break along that block. That is an epic amount of power and a beautiful stick of wood. And he steps out far ahead of the crowd with that effort right there, official time. 14-3-5-2 for Jason Lentz. Calvin Willard with a good 17-21, sort of left in the dust right there on that one. But both of those guys looking good in the standing block.
Don't forget, after the completion of the standing block here, we will uh, take a little time out. We will drop down to the, the bottom two competitors and move on with eight. Right now, though, let's take a look at the two competitors who will be facing off in this final heat. Our defending champion, six-time national champ, Matthew Koger, going up against Walt Page. Couple of my favorite standing block cutters to watch. So this is like, uh, this is dreams right here. Athletes Two ready. guys side by side. Stand They're both going to be posting some serious times. They just Three, saw that 14 two, second one, time from Jason go. Wentz. They got to cut their block though to the best of their ability. Oh, an uncharacteristic bobble from Matt Koger. He stepped, maybe it was. Oh, the block just falling apart from Matt Koger. He shortened up his front. Wow. <laughs> This is just, this is insanity on this stage right now. Matt Koger, I don't know if he if he missed that down hit or if he went to shorten up his front face just to get out of there. So you see there, seven hits in the front of the block. Goes to the back, his first up driver rattles the block in half. And now he just goes into a round of drivers. These guys are watching, they know what that wood's producing. And there's that little expression like, yeah, uh -huh. it could have gone better. Well, unofficially, the number is up there right now is not gonna beat uh, the time of Jason. It's gonna be close, but it's not gonna beat that. But uh, we're waiting as always on the official time to come through after the review by the officials. Now's a good time to talk about those little gray. I, yeah, I've got Matt Koger here. We are waiting to see if his, his time took down Jason Lentz. It's a real science. It's an art to cutting this. You, you have timber sports in your DNA. Right back to your grandfather who raised the mules to drug logs out of the woods. What's the science for cutting a standing block? What did you just tell me? Uh, you just got to, you know, we call it backwards geometry, but it's like, you have to have a certain angle that removes the chip a lot easier, and then you got to match them up so that you know the log comes off more efficient with the fewest number of hits. Jason put up a great cut there before, and you know that that's his time to beat. And well, I thought, well, if he can do it, I can do it. But then I got into it, and the wood wasn't quite probably what was uh, what quite the log that he had. So, well, I got some numbers for you that just came through my ear. 14.11 seconds. That's you, big guy. You just took the lead. Yeah, but <laughs> we'll see how long it stands. There's a couple great competitors coming up here next in the next heat. And, uh, yeah, we'll, see, we'll just see how it goes. You know, like it's just, uh, it's just the name of the game. You want to show me how sharp that axe is? You got a second? Yeah. Watch this. This is Matt Koger's axe. This is an 8-inch wide axe. This is a piece of paper we're no longer using. <laughs> there you go, Matt Koger. I'm going to stay away from that thing. Good stuff for Matt Koger right there. And of course, finishing off everyone else in the standing block. There's your final standings right there. Matthew Koger, an official time of 14.11, just edging out Jason Lentz, who had his own great cut, that's for sure. Calvin Willard, exceptional cut for third place. Walt Page. Trying very hard to get himself back into this thing. Did cut a 17.52 at Slingerland, Bo Quinn, Mike Slingerland, and Matthew Marks. Well, this last heat in the standard block is just absolutely fascinating to me because you look at Cassidy Shear. Two years ago, he was complaining about being, you know, bottom seed in almost every discipline. Now here he is in the top seed. Nate Hodges, his first year in Timber Sports, making it to semis now in the finals. He's top seed. This is insanity. Top two seeds in the standing block. Cassidy Shear on the left. Nate Hodges on the right. Watch for some speed from Nate Hodges. He is a blur when he gets things going. Yeah, he moves this ax like nobody else right now that's cutting the standing block. Got a near full house Athlete here in Ray. Milwaukee today. They want to see this. to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, Cassidy Shear right on that go. But here comes that speed we talked about with Nate Hodges just peppering the hits into that log. 
He's around to the back, and if you can save a fraction of the second on each hit, you're going to come out on top. Oh, he just about didn't come out on top. He thought he was going to finish it off with the penultimate hit there, but it took one more. Yeah, I wondered about that one. Stand one under review. Well, we've got a couple issues going on here, potentially for Cassidy Shear. Issue number one may have been right there. He was really tight on the go. Issue number two is going to come up here in about meh, four seconds. Look at the freight train on stand number two, just busting off. So issue number two is how he finished that log and did he use the blade of the axe to finish that block? You can't flat side it, you can't, you can't backhand it or anything like that, yeah, right? Yeah, no, uh, no Taekwondo, no kicks, punches. <laughs> Look at Nate Hodges here, compact, very powerful competitor here and again his speed is just something that uh, is up at another level all right let's see what rich has to say rich Hallett. after review we determine that both cuts are good all right close call for right. cassidy sheer i've got cassidy sheer cassidy uh talk to me what just happened yeah, I mean, uh, that was a decent cut. I wanted to come off on that last hit. Uh, I didn't, but I, I hit it with the striking blow of the blade of the axe, and that's a legal cut. So, yeah, I mean, I could have gone fast, but whatever, I'll take it. I'm happy. Well, we're going to watch the back side of this block right here. You opened up beautifully. You put two up. Now here comes the driving hits. Talk us through this. Yeah, so I, I got the... And then, uh, yeah, I mean... I hit it with the blade of the axe. Okay, so that is a legal cut, but Rich Held has to review everything. It's a good cut, Cassie. Good steel championship points. This guy's in the race. Cassidy Shear comes out with a clean bill of health there and a good cut to keep him near the top of the standings. Certainly had his ups and downs yesterday, but he seems to have uh, righted the ship today to some degree. Cassidy Shear finishing up officially in fourth place. Nate Hodges. Finishes up right ahead of him in third place. Jason Lentz with a great cut, but Matthew Koger, 14-117. That is strong. The winner of the standing block discipline here. Boy, we're going to take a break. We're going to have to drop two competitors when we come back and move on to the next round where the points are double. That's coming up after this. If stiff pads are a problem. <laughs> Fix it with Duluth Flex Pads, only at Duluth Trading. for any landscape challenge. Battery power, made by steel, only at your local steel dealer. Run with us in the unstoppable John Deere Gator XUV835 and be prepared to go the extra mile. Because when others take rain checks, we take the wheel. With three wide seating, heat, and AC, this is the coolest, most comfortable gator yet. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Search John Deere Gator for more. In Milwaukee, Calvin Willard, one of the guys been fighting for his life through this first uh, series of three disciplines here. We had 20 to show up here. Qualifiers from five qualifying events around the country. 
started with 20, and over the semifinals yesterday, we went with that number down to 10. Plenty of ups and downs, a lot of triumphs and disappointments along the way for these uh, the best choppers and sawyers in the United States. And what a what a run it was through those two pools. I mean, you look at the field of competitors that came in there as part of those two pools of 10. And to go down that list and say, well, half of you have to go home because you're you're not finals material. There are some really top-notch guys that for one reason or another, one circumstance or another, just didn't make it through to the finals. And that's just the nature of the beast here in timber sports. Cassidy Shear just managed to barely by the skin of his teeth get in, but he's doing much far better today and a lot of great axemen are on their way home today or sitting in the stands enjoying the action here today, maybe not enjoying it as much as they would if they were if they were competing. Of course, that pool of, or those two pools of 10, those 20, that whittled down to 10 for today. Well, 10 is now eight, Tommy. 10 is now eight. You can look at those positions, nine and 10. We gotta say goodbye to Calvin Willard. Mark Boquit, oh, and Mike Slingerland. So we're going to have to have a little saw off, I would think, Kevin. I would to think decide. that's in order, yeah. Yeah, look at that. A tie is always decided by a saw off. So I imagine we are going to have Mike Slingerland, Calvin Willard out here to cut for the right to stay on for round number two. Yeah, we got to dip into the rule books on this one because they may have something about first place finishes. I know overall ties are, are settled. All right. All right. We're still looking at the rules. We we thought for a minute we might have a uh, might have a saw off going on. Just waiting for the word on that. I can tell you right now that head judge Rich Hallett and our other stage judge Andy Hall are both over on the side over there with the Granite State. They're checking the rules book. They want to see what's going on. You can see the tent area backstage waiting. Mike Sling looking very comfortable back there. Big crowds here at German Fest. You can see it right downtown, right on the lakefront here. Beautiful spot. Summerfest Park and German Fest, the largest three-day German festival in these United States. This is a lot of German folks living in this community, folks of German heritage, and they definitely, and everyone else turns out for things like the uh, human glockenspiel, the wiener dog races, you name it. They've, they've got it here. Personally, I could go for a round of potato pancakes with some applesauce. Uh. Don't start in. Just on my, my list of things to do today. And I do mean with applesauce. Don't bring them with ketchup. That's not right. OK. I won't make that mistake again. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of great refreshments, as you would imagine, at an event like this. The rides, the come down and buy yourself a Tyrolean hat like that one right there, or a pair of Lederhosen, and man, you are looking sharp going down the street here in Milwaukee. For sure, the Harley Davidson up there. It's another symbol of Milwaukee made right here. Well, I'm happy to say our on-the-stage reporter, Dave Jewett, 
gone over to talk to head judge Rich Hallett. He's going to get this sorted out. All right. That's, We're going to settle this we, once We can count on all. Super Dave in all situations. Food is off the chain here. You're right, Kevin. It's absolutely terrific. In fact, they had sort of, I guess, a German-Asian fusion uh, item for lunch. It was a uh, corned beef roll, uh, corn, like an egg roll filled with corned beef and sauerkraut. Doesn't sound that good with the no, hot that, mustard. That it's sounds, right on the much right on time, my friend. Exceptional. Mm -hmm. No gas required, just pure endurance, elbow grease, and a misery whip. This is the single one. It's a six to six and a half foot saw. It's a science to make these saws. It's a science to run these saws. On go, you want to go full speed on a push or a pull stroke using the entire saw. It's a two to three peg and raker. The pegs are the teeth. They cut the wood. The rakers clean the wood. You want to use the full saw cutting on the forward stroke, cutting on the back stroke, using every muscle in your body from your toes all the way up to your head, driving the saw with confidence through the entire log. If you deviate from your technique, you can dive a raker into the wood, bringing you to a sudden stop. Then you have to regain that momentum, losing time. This is a single buck. These are double points. Single buck is our next one. We have uh, settled our uh, issue with uh, the two who would have to drop out as we move into the second round of these finals here, and that would be Calvin Willard and Mark Boquin. Uh, that tie was settled uh, based on a, a scoring thing, and we'll find out more about that, give you the details on that a little bit later. But we are moving on to round two, two disciplines where the points are doubled. That brings a whole new dimension into it, and our first heat in the single buck. Going to be Mike Slingerland and Matt Marks. Matt Marks had a world record cut in the stock saw a little bit earlier today. Set this place on fire. He has not had time to let that fully sink in. I'm sure he's got big business at hand here. He is in the group of eight who move forward. Well, Tommy, I don't think we're done with the drama out here, though. Mike Slingerland, who is... Uh oh. Okay. Well, we were we were not. We were a little bit ahead. We still had not resolved our scoring issue. Oh, everybody was ahead. Mike Slingle is out there getting ready to set his starter cut, and Matt Shagnan comes over and says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on a minute. Not so fast." Oh man. So Rich and Andy have the rule book out, and they are apparently saying that Mike is not advancing. Remember, he was in a two-way tie. They showed him in eighth place as as being okay. Tied with Calvin Willard. Tied with Calvin Willard, yeah. And we thought the tiebreaker, since he appeared to come out and get ready to cut the yeah. single buck, that that had been resolved that way. But apparently it is not resolved, and we are still sort of uh, hacking away at this thing. So we will see what the final outcome is.
Pocket. Crowd loving it here. Man, we have got we've got nearly a full house, and there's a lot of competition for people's eyeballs here at German Fest with uh, you know, the sound and the fury of Timber Sports and uh, all the excitement. Hey, maybe word got around about the world record. You never know. You never know what brings them in, but boy, they are. They are here in droves today. Milwaukee, totally in a lumberjack state. Wisconsin, the tradition is strong here. All of those skills from way back when that built this country in so many ways still celebrated in this part of the world and celebrated with gusto. So I'll, 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 I can only update you on what we've been told up here in the booth, Kevin and I, and that uh, now that, uh, that Mike Slingerland has been deemed the one who did not win the tiebreaker there. And Calvin Willard is back in the picture, and it will be Calvin Will Willard and Matthew Marks taking on. So yeah, Mark Boquin and Mike Slingerland, the two who are exiting after the first three disciplines. I would, I would love to hear from Dave Jewett via Rich or Rich via Dave or, or some way to know what exactly they used as the, the, the tiebreaker, the points breaker. There's all kinds of speculation. Because this is a new format. This is only the second year we've run this format. And so we've got... We've There's all my got guy. a learning curve. <laughs> yep, we're all learning. We're all trying to stay ahead of the curve here. But from the look of what we see on the stage right now as we look at these great fans in Milwaukee, certainly looks like our first heat of the single buck. It's going to be Calvin Willard and Matthew Marks. Here we go. Remember, double points, the next two disciplines. Single buck and springboard chop. Two very, very hard to master sports, but boy, if you put up a good time here, you're going to be rewarded doubly. And your progression up the leaderboard advances at double speed. Very bleak for him yesterday during the semifinals. Three disciplines in, down in ninth place, and managed to swim his way to the surface and make it to the island that we find him Athlete on now. Ready. Only eight competitors Stand left now. Well, yeah, it looked pretty Timber. bleak for him two minutes ago. Three. I mean, yeah, yeah. Two. Mike <laughs> Slinger was on go. the stage with his saw, ready to go. We're still waiting the official ruling on how that tiebreaker was determined. But it is all bets off now. Calvin Willard has renewed hope, and he is looking to hold this block off. He and does. And he does it. I mean, put, your, put yourself in Calvin Willard's shoes. He sees on the scoreboard, yep, sorry, buddy, you're in ninth place. You're out. Have a nice drive back to Vermont, et cetera, et cetera. And... And then it's, nope, sorry, you're in. Yeah. Grab your saw, you got to make a cut. Yeah, you're late. Get out there. And make a cut. Calvin Willard did. Good job right there. Adrenaline and determination, not his smoothest cut, not his most technical cut, but he was hoeing off a lot of wood. Maybe a tenth ahead of Matthew Marks, maybe a couple of tenths of a second, but good enough to get this victory. Matthew Marks on stand number two. Look at the noodles just discharge out of that saw. See that last pull stroke there? 
sort of stuttered a little bit, held up a little bit. Some of those gullets didn't unload quite all the way. And there again, the gullets didn't unload quite all the way there. We're looking at very soft wood, and it is filling these saws up. Have a run here with Calvin Willard with renewed hope. Just a little too much angle change on that saw. You can see it chatter. It jumps a little bit on his way back. And, I, and again, I don't know that he was really in his proper position where he wanted to be, but man, he's on the stage. He made a cut. Calvin Willard is staying alive. Watch out for Calvin Willard. He be a, may be a man of destiny. There's his official time, 12.17. Yeah, a couple of tenths ahead of Matthew Marks at 12.33. So Calvin Willard stopped at the gate on his way out of town, <laughs> sent back. Saw in hand, he was pushed onto the stage and performs. Does very, very well. Again, only two disciplines in this round. A single buck, springboard chop. Walt Page and Matthew Lentz coming up next. There's Walt Page. The Lumberjack from the Sierras out there in Toll House, California. I mentioned this in the, uh, the qualifying rounds in the semis yesterday with our two pools. I use the analogy of golf all the time with, the, with these guys with their seconds, their helpers. Some of the best golfers in the world caddy for some of the best golfers in the world. That's just absolutely the case here today. Adam LaSalle, a West Coast competitor, stand number one, helping out. Walt Page, and coming in all the way from Australia, Lawrence O'Toole helping Jason Lentz out. Lawrence O'Toole, very well-known international name in timber sports. I thought I caught a glimpse of him earlier. I saw a guy who was looking over fences and stuff like that. He's yeah. about six feet nine. And uh, it turned out it was Lawrence O'Toole. There he is right there. Great chopper and sawyer from down under. Another multi-generational competitor. Look at the setup difference though between Walt Page and Jason Lentz. Walt Page starting that saw nearly dead flat. Jason Lentz just a little bit of nose down action. Walt Page I believe running a JP Mercier saw. And it looks Athletes like ready. Jason Lentz is as well. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Look at the horsepower using every inch of that long frame. Jason Lentz Whoa. forcing his way down through the bottom of that block. Big win for Jason Lentz right there. Jason Lynch started out in fifth place. Timber Sports Championship overall points. We'll wait on that official time, but it looks like it's going to be a good one. Here's another look at that run from Jason Lentz. Look at how he's throwing that handle all the way to the, to the block, throwing his head, throwing his shoulders, getting every ounce he can behind that saw. I was going to wait for the official time. You know, you're chasing 10 5 yesterday, was the fastest time. That was one of the best cuts I thought, Jason, but you thought you could have had a better stroke with about three strokes to go? Yeah, the second stroke uh, from the last stroke there, I kind of short stroked it. Thought it might have come off on the next pull and didn't want to make the same mistake I did last year and get last place in that event. Well, let's talk about what's going on. You're in the small wood at the bottom of that log using a 16-pound saw. How difficult is that to control a saw, especially running a long stroke? You know, uh, the saw filer, I was sending him videos of me yesterday, and he said my technique was perfect. I just had a little bit of bad luck yesterday hanging on the raker. Should have pulled the saw in to the wood just a little bit further. And, I mean, I can't see the other side of the saw, so it's all by feel. And touch and what you think you're all doing. The you know, fastest time of the weekend was 10.5, 10.492, buddy, you're in the lead. There you go.
Well, that's part of that training, that maturation that we're seeing out of Jason Lentz, talking about sending videos to saw filers, getting feedback back, honing that technique, being a true student of the sport, and it is paying off. We heard Super Dave there giving us the official time for Jason Lentz, 10.492. That's pretty strong right there. Calvin Willard hanging in in second place. Got two more heats left to go again. We're down to eight competitors. In the second round of the finals here, the points are doubled up, and uh, there's going to be some changes, going to be some uh, fluidity up and down that leaderboard for sure. It's a little more exciting, a little more uncertain what that outcome's going to be. At 10.492 is now listed as the new U.S. record in this category, the single box. That is just epic. Finals day, we've got two new U.S. records. Matt Marks in the stock saw, Jason Lentz in the single buck. I'd keep making those videos, Jason. That's paying off, buddy. There's Matt Slingerland. Ready to go, had a good cut. Yesterday in the single buck, going up against Nate Hodges. Nate Hodges not, not at the blistering pace he was Stand in the semis. We're going to have to tune it up Three, a little bit, two, get it going one, like yesterday. Go! Yeah, I'm very curious to see how Nate Hodges approaches this. He's a very powerful Sawyer, but I don't think he extends enough. This is a discipline where he can really work on his technique. But look at this! Whoa. Oh! I was about to say Slingerland is going to best him based on technique, but Hodges has just got hoss power. There is so much more that Nate Hodges has to bring to this single buck, and that is terrifying. You can see here he's not getting those arms extended. There he starts to, in the middle of the wood, he starts to make it work a little bit. Stand but he can get back review. off that block and, and really reach and stretch those arms out. Ah, if he if he really figures this out and gets it, he is gonna be unstoppable. And of course, all that's going on, and now there's a penalty flag in the middle of the stage. I believe I heard Rich Hallett say they're uh, reviewing something on stand number two. Being the single buck, the most likely culprit is a potential jumped gun, I would think. I'm trying to think what else it could be with the single buck. Take a look at the disc. Oh, oh, well, all right, you saw that. Well, yeah, so that. I, and I don't think that's going to be an issue because it does look like he cut all the wood. I think the video is going to show that. So the disc broke right at the bottom of the cut. But you can see there, even, even in that last shot, right about now that disc breaks open. And you can see on the pole stroke, pole stroke, he cuts through that wood. You can see that last little crescent moon fall off as well. I don't, I'll be really surprised if they come back and they have an issue with that cut. After review of stand two, we determined that the start was good. Both cuts are good. And there you have it. Sigh of relief for Matt Slingerland. With a broken cut at the bottom, they were able to put both pieces back together. The Humpty Dumpty clause of the rule book brought into play. Tommy mentioned it earlier, worth, worth repeating though, we are in double points mode for this round. As these competitors are duking it out on this stage, each position is just that much more important. Yeah, Matt Slingerland with that one, uh, points wise jumped not one space, but two spaces ahead of Nate Hodges, uh, just in, within the context of the single buck right there is his official time, 11.05, not shabby at all, very good, but uh, he's coming up against the uh, a really otherworldly number from Jason Lentz to set the pace here. 
Calvin Willard in fourth, Page and Marks. One heat remaining. There's Jason Lentz. Going to see how far his move up the leaderboard is going to be at the conclusion of this heat. Between Matt Koger and Cassidy Shear. Boy, you lay down something like that in the heat of battle here, especially in a double point situation. You're doing what you can to get your hands on that trophy. Watching the work going into the setup on Cassidy Shear. This is a discipline he has just accelerated at an unbelievable rate in the past couple of years. He, well, that's a fair statement in almost every discipline for Cassidy Shear. Yeah. And I think even more so in this single buck event. having a great day coming into the second round. He was runner up in points to Matthew Koger. Just two behind. Let's see if he can find something extra today in the single buck. Matt Koger, one of the steadiest single buckers you will find. Number to beat is formidable. Jason Lentz, 10.49. After this heat, they'll set up for the springboard chop. Cassidy Shear pretty meticulous about getting his setup right. Everything feeling the way it should be, the proper uh, application of the powder. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Big pole stroke from our six-time champ, Matt Colger. But watch out, here comes Cassidy Shear. He is on his heels. Oh, it's going to be wow. Matt Colger by half a second. Oh, and look, look at, at that this time, time oh, from Matt oh, no. Colger. <laughs> Could be looking at another national record here. Again, that is an unofficial time. It's showing 10-3-3. That most likely will not be exactly his official time. But even showing that 10-3-3, that's got to be a new national record. I tell you what, the timber is on today. Our competitors are on today. Times are falling. <laughs> it's elated. He knows how good that cut was. Start to finish. We'll get a yet another look at it, I imagine, before it's all done. Or let's take a slow-mo look at it right here at his technique. Matt, you've just been studying the single buck. Why? Because you've always fallen behind. You've been vulnerable in steel points in the single buck, rather. Uh, no longer that is the case. You just keep going faster, faster. I thought... That was the fastest two strokes you had ever made. What did you think? Uh, definitely the fastest two strokes I've, I've ever done. And, you know, it, I've watched you over the years. And, you know, really you are my role model in this sport. And I uh, appreciate all the things you've shown me in, in single bucking and even double bucking and just even just the sport in general. I, I, and I appreciate that, man. Well, it's just coming in my ear right now. 9.85. <laughs> I'm glad I'm holding the mic 
in my prime, I'm not sure I could have done that, Matt. One more word, buddy. How you feeling? Uh, fantastic. <laughs> we are going to assume you are going to move on to the next round. But we still got another event to go. We're going to let you get ready for the springboard. We're going to let you bring it down. Come back on the, up in the springboard. Congratulations for the win. Congratulations for the national record. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, there you go. Matt Coger. Well, Jason Lentz held that national record, that new national record for all of, I would say, 17 minutes at least. Wouldn't you, Kevin? Yeah, that's that's got to be a stinger. You know, we saw this a few years ago. We had a records fest when we were in New York City, and the new steel MS-661s came out in the stock saw. And I think we broke the record like three times in a <laughs> row that day because the saws were just so incredibly fast. This time, yeah, the wood is fast. The conditions are right. Things are going good. But these guys are being flawless. And even with Jason Letts, you heard him say, he kind of stutter-stepped the bottom of that cut. He managed to push it off. Still set a new national record. Not to get all what-ifs and who knows, but what would Jason, what Jason's time could have been without that stutter-step at the bottom. These guys are pushing the envelope. It is epic to see where we're going with this sport. Matthew Coger backstage getting all the accolades and uh, congratulations from his peers right there. I guess the weather's just perfect for record setting here today. Good and warm in Milwaukee. Nice breeze keeping it comfortable and look at those incredible times, the two times at the top of the leaderboard right there. And we thought Jason Lentz had just set the world on fire, but Matthew Coger came and just took the top of the mountain really quick right there. And that's gonna give him top points coming out of the single buck as we head into the springboard chop. Well, you gotta recognize all three of those guys. I mean, Cassidy Shear at 10-5 right on Jason's heels. Matt Coger just laying down the gauntlet though. And that was really just beautiful technique. Just pulled a great cut. Nice job to all those guys. There's your Steel Timber Sports overall championship points right there. Matthew Koger stretches out a lead right there. Six points ahead of Cassidy Shear. Cassidy Shear managing to hang in there in second place, but the point deficit is more. Jason Lintz right behind Cassidy Shear with the 37. Slingerland, Nate Hodges, Walt Page, Calvin Willard, Matthew Marks. Two of these will take their exit before we go to the hot saw, but we got something very important. The springboard is coming up. The road less traveled. Grit and perseverance. Diligence and persistence. Hard work and ingenuity. This is the Steelway. German engineered. Built in America. Believing in America. landscape challenge battery power made by steel only at your local steel dealer forecasts are fickle don't change your plans change your pants Duluth Trading Flexpedition Pants. Highly capable clothing. Only at Duluth Stores and DuluthTrading.com.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have the two head judges here, the most difficult job in timber sports, Andy Hall from Great Britain. And we've got Rich Hell here. Rich Hell, 27 years in timber sports. You were a competitor before you were judging. What is that like, knowing you've been out here, you've been in the same situation as these competitors, knowing, hey, when you get a disqualification, you know that yellow flag's coming from the judge? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I take it very seriously. I know what it feels like to be disqualified and consequently uh, consider the calls very carefully. But the thing is, we gotta be fair, we gotta have the rules, and uh, that's my job, use judgment. Every year, all the head judges from around the world, not 27 countries involved right now, you all get together in January and have a meeting. What do you talk about, Andy? Andy Hall here from Great Britain, thanks for coming. What's this meeting like, knowing now 27 countries involved? Yeah, there's 27 countries competing. Um, we have a team of six international judges, so the format of the meeting, we tend to review uh, the previous season and we'll preview the forthcoming season, just to make sure we've got consistency around the globe. All right, and very, very, very rarely do these judges miss anything, especially with all the cameras, because you know the competitors see what you see. You've been calling a perfect, uh, perfect match this weekend. Keep it up. Thanks for being here, gentlemen. Thank you. There they are. The Timber Sports 5-0. Been a hard road for these guys to get there. In the local contests. Careers that started back in college days. And learning with each passing year, learning from their peers. It is sort of a family atmosphere out there. They love beating each other's brains out, but they, uh, they're a family otherwise. They all believe in helping one another. They don't want anyone to be at a disadvantage. It's the same spirit behind our officials for sure. We want to keep it fair. We want to keep a level playing field for these guys so they can compete, do their best, and get a rewarded appropriately. Some scenes from this week from the springboard chop. Arguably the most difficult to master and the most arduous of all the six disciplines here. They're blowing pretty hard after each one of these, but uh, after the springboard chop, I mean, a guy's not got much left in the tank, you got to say. No, that is the longest lasting discipline, the longest lasting event that we have here in the Steel Timber Sports Series. When it goes very well, you're talking about, you know, three quarters of a minute. When it doesn't go so well, you're looking at a minute and three quarters, maybe two minutes of just all out, blow it out, physical exertion. And as you mentioned, Tommy, there's just so many variables, so many pieces. The first pocket could go wrong. The second pocket could go wrong. You could have an ax that's cutting the tulip poplar pole, but it doesn't like the white pine at the top. And you start stacking all those variables up. Each one of those variables is just an opportunity for failure mm. and an opportunity for success. And when they talk about this being the original extreme sport, this, this would be a good one to point people in the direction of if they want to see uh, lumberjack skills in the extremity. Yeah, and this is, of, of the six disciplines, the springboard and the hot saw are the two that I watch our rookie competitors in. Because whether they're coming out of the college ranks or they're getting started independently or they're working with another one of our, our steel timber sports professional athletes, these are the two disciplines that have the the highest number of variables, the most things that can go wrong or right, and uh, this is where you really see, you really test their metal. Uh, and you look at guys, there he is right now, Walt Page, who just has just waded into this sport with such, such style and, and done it so well, and the springboard has become one of his marquee events. Yeah, they all have different characteristics, the elegance of, of Walt Page, you know, the sort of frenetic uh, style and part of other people that really just uh, move so fast and, and appear to be bearing down so hard. And there's a lot of different ways to get to the finish line here, and we're getting to see the best of the best uh, displaying it at its best this week. 
But a lot of attention going into the springboard here. It's finals time. At double points on the line, this is the, the next and final discipline before we, before we weed out and thin out the field again. There's a lot of guys just watching those points, watching, strategizing, trying to figure out their most efficient way to stay in the finals to the end. Matt Koger again in competition overall points with a six point lead ahead of Cassidy Shear. Jason Lentz in third place, Matt Slingerland, Nate Hodges, Walt Page, those would be the six who advanced uh, if we were to do it right now, but no, we're gonna do the gonna do the springboard chop to decide that. Points are doubled. We get to the hot saw, points are tripled. One of the aims, I guess, to let no man feel safe in his position until he gets to the end of his journey here this special week. Watching some highlights from qualifying. All the action we saw here yesterday. Highs and lows, Trevor Beaudry. Unfortunately, not making it through. Mullet flying in the breeze behind him. Yeah. Speed lines directing his skull towards that standing block. Yeah. Matt Slingerland in there. Calvin Willard, Matt Marks getting ready to open up the springboard chop discipline for us here. We will have four heats. Marks in the foreground, Willard. And the orange and red in the Athletes background. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Of course, Matt Marks already has a new national record in the stock saw under his belt. He uh, was talking earlier today about his climb in the springboard yesterday, and here it is, not off to a very good start again on this springboard climb. Said he doesn't like pulling down on that ax, doesn't want to use it to hoist himself up. He's worried about the ax coming out of the log. Got a good looking first board set, but it's Calvin Willard that's putting on a clinic here. Second board in and looking strong. Look at Calvin Willard, he is way back. Wow, a little bobble there from Matt Marks. That board listing kind of toes down, heels up for Matt Marks. Calvin Willard way out at the back of his block, looking very comfortable up there. Got a ton of wood weighted out of that thing, and now he's into the back. Two slash, oh, three slashy Good close. Cut. You really can't do it much faster or quicker than that. I thought maybe he ran away from the front side of that block because he turned so quick, but I think he just knew that block was coming apart. Calvin Matt. Willard fighting for his life here, coming into the springboard chop at the one of the bottom two positions in this field of eight that are left here in this second round and throwing up a sub-minute springboard chop cut is certainly in his favor, and that might have been several seconds under a minute, Kevin. Yeah, it looks like a really nice cut here. We get a, a good look at Matt Marks and his first pocket. You can see it's just not coming apart well. That ax is sticking. He flicks, he cleans, and he starts pecking at it. Matt Bush is probably not watching at home, but if he was, he would have some strong words for Matt Marks. He always said, just lean back and hit it. Don't start pecking. You see Calvin Willard in the background, though. He is up there cleaning out that second hole. And then watch this run from Calvin Willard. Almost with like a sudden sense of urgency, he just stops chopping on the front side of this log. Puts it, oh there it is, you can see the block was breaking. Mm -hmm. It was a down hit, normally these guys finish with up hits. On a down hit he started to crack that block apart, wisely got around because he has to finish from the back side of the log and finished off that block. Good save from Calvin Willard. Yeah, and absolutely has to finish with the time that's in the upper half of this field here because he is in the precarious position at the bottom of the eight right now. And Calvin Willard rising to the occasion, sort of got to feel like he's on borrowed time here. He's almost out the door, thought he had lost a tiebreaker. Yeah, there you can see, that's a great shot right there. You can see right off his, yeah, and he pulls up. He was about to take another hit on that block when it split down the side on the earlier hit. He pulls up, doesn't take the hit, does two slashing blows to release a chip that clears the way to get to that far wood. 
And there it is on this next hit, just slashes through that remaining timber. There's that official time. Yeah, well under a minute. 52 seconds and a half pretty much for Calvin Willard right there. Matthew marks up uh, eight seconds past that one minute mark. So Calvin Willard doing what he can to help his cause stay in that field, hopefully be among the six who moves on to the hot saw to finish the championship. Change out blocks here on stage, get a look sort of behind our stage. That's uh, some of the cars and some of the competitors you can see right there. We're in the BMO Harris Bank Arena here. It's one of those big, as they call in the entertainment business, one of the sheds, one of those big uh, buildings that uh, sometimes only has the roof over the stage house and stage. And we've got it over the entire crowd here. It's beautiful shade and a nice breeze on the lake. You can't figure out a better way to spend a Saturday afternoon in Milwaukee. Steel Timber Sports Championships 2019. Started out with 10 competitors today, went through three disciplines, dropped two. We're down to eight right now. Matthew Coger leading the way, six points ahead of Cassidy Shear. Got to give a shout out to the Granite State Wood Crew. Based out of New Hampshire, but there's guys that join in from all over the country. They fly in to help out with this deck crew. New York, West Virginia, Vermont. And needless to say, this is their big, big event, big job of the year as well. They come well prepared and everyone has their task to do and they do it efficiently. Walt Page getting set to go here against Jason Lynch. This is from yesterday, Walt Page. Yeah, watch this run. Great first board set. Strong second board set. Flat in every direction. Turns, gets out of the back, and just finds that last fiber. Almost ended up stumping himself. You can see that ax driving down into the bottom of the block. Got it off cleanly. Cleanly enough anyways to get him into the finals day. Double points. Going up against Jason game. Lentz, who said, uh, can't always say that for a time he held a national record. Single buck for a little while anyway today. Put up a great time, put himself right in the thick of the race. The race for the championship here. Everyone trying to catch the uh, sixth time. Six championships in a row for Matt Koger, and he's got the lead in overall points Athletes right now. Ready. We've got this heat ready to go. Stand to your timber. You mentioned that Three, momentary two, record for one, Jason Lentz. Go. He didn't see a lot of celebration out of him. He's not a big celebration guy, but I think he knew. I think he knew that Matt Koger had a really good shot at taking that record down. And I think he would have seen some celebration if that record held. Right. Well, trouble for Walt Page. That first board did not go where he wanted it. That means his second pocket is around the tree farther than he wanted. You can see him working into the bark, but he is rallying a pretty solid board set. It's starting to drop a little bit. He's not waiting around, though. He is wading into the front of that white pine block at the top, as is Jason Lentz on stand number two. Walt Page around in the mid-30-second range. There All it is. Right. Low 40 seconds, probably around 42 second run for Walt Page. Everything Jason. is looking good. He is your new leader. What a comeback on the run from Walt Page. Well, watch this first pocket. When he gets that board set, pounding several hits in, wrenching the chip out. He is up well behind Jason Lentz. 
by the time he gets working on that second pocket, has a great clean second pocket, and then just goes to work on that block at the top. Well, Walt Page making a strong case that he belongs in the six who are going to advance from the springboard chop when we finish the springboard chop here. It's a system that's uh, been put together. It's only been in use the second year this year. Are you ready for the knockout rounds at this summer Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championship? A field of 10 competitors will compete in three events. The underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block. Only the top eight will move to the next round. Single block. And the springboard. In this round, the points double and the pressure intensifies as two more competitors will be eliminated. The remaining field of six survivors advance to the final round, the hot zone. This unpredictable event is now worth triple the points. Elevating the stress is making three clean cuts. The athlete who survives these knockout rounds with the most points will be crowned the next Steel Timber Sports U.S. Champion. Well, you saw the guy who uh, fit that bill last year as he had the previous five years. Matt Goger got it done. Got it done in fine fashion. Can he do it again this year? Well, he certainly put himself in position thus far. He has yet to cut his springboard chop. He'll be going up against Cassidy Shear in just a few minutes when they get some new poles installed here with blocks already on top and good to go. We got three heats of those original Tulip Poplar nine foot uh, uprights there. Had to make the change out here, keep everything fair, give everyone equal opportunity to set their boards and get up and start cutting on that block. All pages official time, you see it right there, 42-7-3. Man, that is a strong, strong effort from Walt Page. Dave Jewett was saying a little while ago, he said that is probably a new personal best for Walt Page. That is, that's a really remarkable time. You start getting these guys in the low 40s, upper 30s, that's just, that's, that's epic. Well, coming in sixth place out of eight competitors in overall points when we started this uh, knockout round here, right? With the two disciplines and... Uh, Did himself a whole lot of good right boy, there. Boy, he, he just moved himself, uh, he's out of that sixth place as it stands right now. Yeah. Probably will remain so, looking good to get ahead and get a crack at that hot saw and see what happens. You know, look at that finish from Walt Page. Walt Page finishing in third place among the 10 in his pool yesterday. One of the guys representing for the uh, West Coast for sure. California Forester. And no longer considered one of the young upstarts around here. He's a, he's no, he, a solid member of the uh, 
the full timers is, here. He absolutely is, and it's been absolutely awesome to watch that transition, that, that metamorphosis, if you will. And uh, so much about what makes Walt Page a great competitor is the stuff between his ears. He's got the right outlook on it. He's got the right attitude on it. He is a smart individual, and, and he brings that to this stage. He brings that to these disciplines. Nate Hodges and Matt Slingerland on this one. Nate Hodges made his debut in the Steel Timber Sports Series Championship stage yesterday. Very first discipline of the day, stepping up and just pretty much shutting out the rest of the field, collecting a win in the springboard chop. Going up against Matt Slingerland. Athletes ready. Stand Which to your serve timber. Serve him well to win this heat if he can. Three, two, one, go. Obviously a really solid time to beat there, that 42-7-4. What is, what is going on with Nate Hodges? Like what, I just don't get it. What? It, it, I keep saying how like, you know, rookies, springboard, tough discipline, and it, he's just, he just flows through this. The speed, the accuracy. I've never seen anyone stand on a board and chop that fast. I'm sorry, I never have. Oh, man. Check it out. Nate Hodges. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I just... <laughs> what can you say? He did it before you had time to think of what's going on. Let's go back and watch this run from Nate Hodges, real time. Won't take long. Yeah. Every action, the, 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 the efficiency, the no wasted movements, perfect four hit pocket, slam the board to the back of the hole, up on it, back to the back of the board, start cutting, and then of course there's that swing speed. Not to mention, look at the snow shovel he's swinging up there, holy cow. Axe in and out of the wood, Quick, efficient movements, no hang-ups, no issues, cut out the back of it, just did exactly what, it's like somebody took decades of timber sports knowledge and plugged it into a USB port in the back of his brain and then played it like 10% faster yeah, than everybody else has seen it. Double speed. I got Nate Hodges here catching his breath. He's been pretty reserved with his celebration all weekend. Nate, I love it. Potentially a national record. Two fists skyward. And you said you got a little Australian movement there. The Australians being the best springboard cutter. Buddy, you might be better. Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, it's, that, that one put me to the test there. I, it was a good run. I'm happy with that one, Dave. 
You know, you four hits on the bottom, four hits on the top. Most competitors want to be into the top log around 20 seconds. I, cu I clocked you at 15 seconds hitting the log. Yeah, you can't complain about that. That was, that was a heck of a run. I hope the fans all enjoyed it. I mean, it's giving them what they want to see, having a good time. So, well, Your official time is coming in in just a second. Do you think you could go faster? You would just have a flamethrower of a swing when you get up there. Yeah, it's funny. We all know as professionals, I could have done that a couple seconds quicker. I don't know what I got. I got so excited I didn't even turn all the way around and tried to slash it off backhand and then had to go ahead and make the turn. But, hey, it, it worked out. I'll tell you what else worked out. 37.27. That's our new leader right there with one heat to go, Nate Hodges. 37.27. That is just off the chain. Absolutely. How many people are going to be replaying this video again and again and again just watching this almost supernatural effort? Well, you heard Dave Jewett talking about the Australians and the springboard cutting. They're going up three boards. They're, they're doing one right after another after another. And that effort from Nate Hodges is what you would expect from our Australian cutters. Four hits, four hits, slam the board to the back of the hole, no wasted movements, no messing around, nice freaking job, Nate Hodges. Taking over the lead with a five point margin right there, a five second margin I should say. That's the way you take, uh, take advantage of a double point situation by the way. Walt Page still hanging in second, and Jason Lentz in third. What a day, Tommy. I mean, just, <laughs> the, you know, the weather, the, the, the all great. But everything that's happened on this stage has just been epic. <laughs> yeah, it's just been announced. That's a new national record. Yeah, the not? third one today. Why the third not? one today. Nate Hodges of California. His first visit to the stage at the Steel Timber Sports Championship and that 37-271. A new national record. Third time one was set today. There's a lot of high fives and fist bumps and pats on the back going back there. I mean, you just you gotta recognize everybody. You gotta recognize Matt Marks. You gotta recognize Jason Lentz. I know his record didn't stand for long. You gotta recognize Matt Coger and a huge hats off Nate Hodges. You don't do that in your first year, Nate. You're supposed to be nervous. You're supposed to be fumbling. <laughs> they got you on in the uh, in the back in the waiting area out back there, and uh, Nate's competing with you, Kevin. But uh, I tell you what, it's gonna take some. Monster effort to compete with Nate Hodges in the springboard chop. We only have one heat remaining. And that is coming up between our defending national champion. Second place to start this second round, Cassidy Shear. You know what, Tommy? Let's just do it again. Let's break another new record. Well, why not? Why not? I got time. You got time? Let's do another one. Seems like that's uh, the prerequisite. Just have someone go in front of you and set one and then jump up and set it yourself. Wow. What what a day. Look at, look at that block. I mean, it's just laser What a, laser what a beautiful job. cut. Yeah. It's, it's like a laser thing. It's like it was done in a shop somewhere. You know, it's My easy work. to muddle your way through a cut and get the job done. You, you can't muddle your way through a national record. Uh, nice job. Seriously, just beautiful cut, beautiful climb. Some next level stuff right there from Nate Hodges. Thanks so much, Nate. You've made everyone's day here in, many, uh, in Milwaukee and around the world. From Minneapolis on the left, Cassidy Shear. From the Mountaineer State, West Virginia. The defending champion, Matt Coger, and he's got a number to shoot for, Kevin. Oh, yeah. And it's out there in the stratosphere. I'm ready. Let's see it. Let's do it. Send him off. Let's go.
Cassidy Shear again comes into this thing, into the second round, second place in points. Behind this man, Matt Coger. Cassidy Shear, the consummate showman. He would love nothing better than to jump up there and take down the champ in that one. That would give him cause for celebration for sure. And Matt Coger, solid, sturdy, talented, strong, fast. A great mind for this sport. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Okay, they got a time to beat. They got points to get. Advantage Coger on that first pocket. Four hits, but got to go back, sweep, start to peck at it. Cassidy Shear up to that block, took advantage of that fumble from Coger. These guys are cutting at 20 and 22 seconds respectively. We're not gonna see, I don't think, it, it'd be an absolute miracle at this point for either one of them to break that record set by Nate Hodges. Oh, that's a good oh, cut though from Cassidy tight. Shear. Both of them putting out a great... In normal circumstances, those would be world beaters right there. Unbelievable. Well, you talk about a bunch of guys rising to the occasion on this special day, yeah. summer of 2019. We are seeing it in action here. It is magnificent. Let's take a look at this run here from these two gentlemen as they duke it out head to head. Advantage Koger, but just slightly on that first board. Getting into this second board, Koger bobbles a little bit. Oh, Cassidy Shear bobbled a bit too, almost going over backwards on that board. Koger's got to go in for a finger sweep and a couple of, of peck hits to clean out that second pocket. Cassidy Shear, though, not wasting any time wading into that white pine block at the top of the tree. I didn't think either one of them had a chance. I didn't think they could move that much wood that quickly. They proved me wrong. Cassidy Shear right on the heels of Nate Hodges. I don't think he quite caught him. What a run. What a day. Let's do it again. Re-rack. Let's just start the day over. Get these guys some more blocks. Yeah, we're on a roll here. Oh, my gosh. No doubt about that. Heading you know, for a championship. And, and Tommy, it was... It's been quite a few years now since we went to this. Every country has their own timber sports series or timber sports event. And uh, there was a lot of talk because I'll get to that in a minute. We'll let Dave have his time. Got Cassidy here. Cassidy, I was going to say, you guys aren't going to catch that record. You just need to get double points. It looked like that was not on your mind. It looked like you were chasing that record and you had it within your grasp when you turned to the backside. Yeah, no, I... I'm really happy with that cut. I've been having problems with the climb, getting bad pockets, bad boards, but I just, yeah, I mean, if you want a championship, you need to send it every time you can. I did that, it was a pretty good cut. I mean, uh, I, I gotta hand it to Nate. I mean, Nate's, Nate's a talented individual, he's fast, but I'm, I'm gonna keep going for that record now. You just missed it. 37.71 seconds, Cassidy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know a spot I could have picked up a second. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going for it next year. All right, there you go. I guarantee we're going to see you next year. I guarantee we're going to see him in the hot sauce for triple points coming up next. Oh, Cassidy Shearer, any other day in the world. He would have nailed that, world, that the national record for himself. But Nate Hodges just did something off the charts and what hats off to Cassidy Shear stepping up there and almost getting it done Matthew Coger not too far behind about a second and a tenth behind in third place Walt Page gets fourth fourth place points there Jason Lentz Willard Slingerland and Marks all three of those guys that's just that's an epic pace that's blistering Well, here's what we need to see right now. The situation with the uh, overall Steel Timber Sports competition points. And there they are right now. And you see Cassidy Shear having knocked a couple of points off the deficit he held. 
to Matt Koger. Matt Koger still on top by four points ahead of Sheer. Nate Hodges, that big move right there, setting the national record as well. He's going to be four points behind Cassidy Shear, Jason Lentz, Matt Slingerland, Walt Page, Calvin Willard, and Matthew Marks will be the two he will drop off. Those six, Page, Slingerland, Lentz, Hodges, Shear, and Koger will take it into the hot saw where the points are tripled. Well, Tommy, I started to say before that interview with Dave Jewett, I want to talk about some real serious format stuff that's happened in the past couple of years, and, and we're seeing it pay off right now. This, this is the pinnacle. We're seeing the value invested in U.S. Timber Sports. Great action coming up. I can't wait. We'll be right back. The road less traveled. Grit and perseverance. Diligence and persistence. Hard work and ingenuity. This is the Steelway. German engineered, built in America, believing in America. landscape challenge battery power made by steel only at your local steel dealer forecasts are fickle don't change your plans change your pants Duluth Trading Flexpedition Pants. Highly capable clothing. Only at Duluth Stores and DuluthTrading.com. Loudest and fastest event in timber sports. These are the Frankensteins of the saw world. This is the hot saw. Once the competitors bring their saws up on stage, they have an 18 inch log in front of them. Now they are allowed a 60 second warm up. Why? These saws are 250 to 350 cc engine. Since this is the final event, the competitors can no longer hold back. Hands on top of the wood, they wait for the go. On go, they must start the saw, pick it up, full throttle into the wood in around one second, severing that 18 inch log with a 200 mile an hour chain speed. A seamless transition into the up cut, once again feeling that 60 horsepower engine, then going into the third cut, hopefully dropping three clean discs in around six seconds, getting major points. Tom, we started to talk about format, or I started to talk about formatting yeah. a bit. Umpteen years ago, when we went to this format where Steel Timber Sports became a, a national event and not an international event here in the United States. In other words, competitors from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, that were traveling here, ended up with their own series. And comments were made way back then, and I won't name names, but comments were made that without the Aussies and the Kiwis here, the U.S. athletes wouldn't have anybody to chase, especially in the springboard. Mm. <laughs> and the prediction was made that we would never see times from the U.S. springboard cutters, like we saw from the Aussies and the Kiwis. I have never been prouder, never more optimistic after seeing what we just saw here today. That was absolutely amazing congratulations nate hodges congratulations to everybody there that was awesome nate hodges cassidy sheer I, i'm wondering if uh, if you took nate's cut out of there would cassidy's have been the I, national record i'm racking found? my brain i think that i think the old record was like low 38 so i think yeah. cassidy if he'd been oh in an earlier God. heat he could have had a record for a couple of minutes too but yeah the timing wasn't perfect but man it was a thing of beauty for sure on the part of Cassidy Shear and Cassidy Shear did what he could and did 
magnificent work in order to put himself in position to have a shot at the national championship. And that's what this final round, this final discipline is going to do. It's going to decide that. It is the hot saw. And the twist is our remaining six athletes will take on the hot saw one at a time. We're going to minimize the distractions. We're going to heighten the focus on each individual competitor. Oh, and they're getting revved up in the background. <laughs> that first hot saw lit off for the warm-up session, and the woos are already going up <laughs> yeah. from the crowd. This is pure metal mayhem. These are machines that were never intended to cut wood. They are dirt bikes, snowmobiles, personal watercrafts, that have been milled, welded, bolted. Stripped uh, down. You, oh, you, <laughs> you name it. They are, they are so bare bones. Every piece on there plays an essential role to the function of this tool. There are no accessory parts. Well, I was even laughing at the start of the weekend because last year they, they made a decree that, hey guys, you should fabricate some kind of cover to cover at least the end of the crankshaft <laughs> that is just, you know, most of these guys, they have a, the, the sprocket side on one, uh, one side of the crankshaft and the magneto is on the other side of the crankshaft. Well, the sprocket side is got a, a shroud around it, a, an open shroud around it. The magneto side was just an open spinning end of the crankshaft. So you'll see a lot of these guys have some sort of piece of plastic or aluminum fabricated to cover the end of the crankshaft. And that's the closest that any of these tools have to a, an accessory cover. We celebrate the 50th anniversary of the landing on the moon this summer as well. And I think we're even seeing some materials from the space program showing oh, yeah. up on, on some of these machines out here. Just to take the weight away, the carbon fiber, the special fabrics and fibers that... Uh, you know, have been designed specifically to minimize weight yeah, and, Matt, and maximize strength. Matt Coger bringing out a bunch of carbon fiber in his saw, and he was throwing around some numbers about the weight he shaved off of that saw. I mean, and, and this is where we're going with the sport. I mean, it's just everything is getting that much more attention. Have a look, another look at the Steel Timber Sports overall championship points right there, and it's Matt Coger with the four-point advantage over Cassidy Shear. Nate Hodges, Jason Litt, Matt Slingerland, and Walt Page. Points are tripled here. So what might be six points for a first place among this field of six would be worth 12 points, Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm, I'm going down this list, Tommy. Obviously, Matt Coger sitting at the top of the heap. Six-time champ. Would love to be seven-time champ. <sighs> Cassidy Shear. Uh, I go back to yesterday. Uh, you know, he, he made a decision to run his production modified saw. Uh, ended up getting disqualified, made it through anyways. Didn't get that run time on his open mod saw. He's got to break that open mod saw out today. He's got to go for it. Nate Hodges, I, I, I don't even want to say it's his first year in the sport. It might as well be his 20th year in the sport. But there's just, there's a lot of unknowns coming down this line. Matt Slingerland lost this championship two years ago because of the hot saw. Walt Page, I mean, it's, yeah. Pandelirium is about to ensue out here. I misspoke about the point. Uh, 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 a first place would not be 12 points, it would be 18 points. Yes, triple yeah, points. Yeah, yeah, yeah triple we'll points. Do our 18 math. points. Yeah, I, I, I'm going back to math school here. Soon, That's why we don't we keep wrap it up today. <laughs> we don't keep score, we just report the scores, <laughs> That's right. folks. That's, uh... and, and, and sometimes correctly. Final event of the day, 
Going solo, running a 330 Honda from Toll House, California. One more time, give it up for Walt Page. And you're looking at you're looking at 60 horsepower of chainsaw right here with a 200 mile per hour chain speed. Walt Page, sixth place in overall points among our six who are in this final round in the championships. Beautiful machine, Walt Page bringing the stage. 330 cc displacement motor. Great close-up look at that thing. Tommy mentioned our space program <laughs> earlier yeah. in the broadcast. And this, I, I use that analogy a lot. It is like a launch protocol with these things. Uh, you, but you're out there solo. You don't have a support team. Th this is a top fuel dragster going down the track where the driver has to get out and, you know, prime the cylinders and, and rub down the tires and make sure everything's ready to go. Walt Page giving the nod saying he's ready for the warm-up. He's going to push in his decompression Warm valve. Warm up your saw. Start, turn the fuel on. Turn on the ignition. It's a throwaway starter cord. It's wrapped around a pulley on the, on the far side of that crankshaft. You get one pull on these things. You don't want to carry the extra weight of a recoil. And then you can also see there is a tether a fat, uh, fastened to the deck over there. Got to make sure that that tether is attached to your starter cord. So the heat of the moment when you go to rip that saw, you can, uh, you can get some distance seconds. on that handle. This is a pure unlimited race here. I guess the only limitation, you have to one cylinder, Single right? Single cylinder. Single cylinder and, and everything to, else goes. You gotta be able to start it and, and lift it and move it on your own. No electric start, no springs to make the thing jump up or or whatever. See, so he's got his left hand down. He's on the fuel shut off right now. When he gets the signal for about 10 seconds to go, he'll turn that fuel on. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Oh, no! Oh, he may have done it. Look at that. Walt, buddy, I'm making the same face uh, right now. <laughs> Dancing with disaster there for sure. Look how close he is to that line. You cannot make that line go away, even the tiniest fraction of it. Yeah, Andy Hall having a good look around the bottom side of that block. As is Rich Hallett. I mean, this is this is it. This is fine. Look at the tabletop that Andy Hall just moved out of the way. There's a bunch of laughing and poking over there with Walt Page. The cut is good. Wow. <laughs> Let's take a look at this run here again from Walt Page completely jumps over his first mark, goes to his second mark, and he's crooked. So that just gives him a double whammy. Man, does he just sneak oh. that cut in. That third disc must have been wafer thin. On top of that, Tommy, you see how close the top of the bar got to the underside of that log. Even though he finished his third cut, back, uh, Mike Slingle and I were just talking about this. This is the, the Mike Sullivan rule. He was, he's been so upset over for so long. Even though the cut was done, where did he get this cut from? There's no wood there. <laughs> Most more or less disintegrated the wood that was that, left. I that mean, was it. Look at that purple line. Now, the Barely rule did. is you cannot sever that purple line. You can buff it, file it, sand it, remove a portion, but you cannot sever that line. There has got to be just a 16th of that crayon mark left. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, he's a cool customer. He was not, uh, no panic involved. He knew what had to be done, and he did it. The tightest of margins <laughs> available to him. And you see it right there. You can still see that line in full going all the way around the block.
I started to mention the other way that things hey, almost well, let's went talk horribly about you wrong. You and I, we both said going into that third cut, there's no way you're going to pull that off. What were you thinking? Because that first cut was incredibly thick. Well, after that first cut, I, I thought my next two were going to have to go on a diet. Like, there was, there was not much wood left there to get those last two cuts in. And, and I, I cut the line in half. So I used every, every centimeter they gave me. And, uh, you know, luckily I did get that third cut. So we'll see, uh, you know. Now, we're going to ask you to stick around, though. Right now, you're the virtual leader at 6.67. Remember, this is triple points. So you're in the lead right now overall. We're going to have you sit tight until someone knocks you off, but they're going to have to beat 6.67. A fast time for two very thin discs. Yeah, well, there, absolutely. There's guys coming that will they'll lay down some fast times. All right. All right, heat number two. Well, if no one beats the... 6.672, it's going to be 18 points to the good for Walt Page right there. That's how volatile the scores can be when you go to triple points, triple value points in this final one discipline round. There he is, Matt Slingerland. Think back to yesterday, which Matt Slam does not want to think back to yesterday in the hot saw. He was uh, in command of the points, sitting in beautiful shape in his pool, and went for it. Just absolutely sent it in this hot saw discipline, and it did not pay out for him. Uh, trouble, broken cookie, cut out. I can't remember exactly even <laughs> in what order or, or what sort of mayhem went down. He's got to put that behind him. He can't think about two years ago. He can't think about yesterday. It's him, the block, the stopwatch. That's Lingerland starting this final discipline Warm up your on the saw. baseline. About three points ahead of where Walt Page started. Matt Slingerland, the first one who could conceivably win from down there in fifth place. If he collects first place, and given a, uh, well, a DQ by Matt Koch. So this is the first, uh, Walt Page certainly the potential to be a spoiler if he comes out on top. Matt Slingerland comes on top and given failures seconds. all around around him. It's a possibility. It's mathematically possible. He yeah. could engineer a win here. That's six six seven. I mean, I know that was not a great cut for Walt Page, but you see times in the sixes, you're you're moving, you're moving these saws. Think of Pool B yesterday, half the field. Yeah. And if the field was this size, right? DQ. Yep. Including this man. Yeah. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Afternoon, team first cut. Looking good, looking good. Ooh, that was fast too. Unofficially shown in the low five second range. Double inspection from our two judges. Had saw trouble yesterday, and when we pulled up on the property today, Kevin, we saw him out in the field working on a, a different saw, getting it ready to go, getting it. And this one, he says, is much more like his uh, his saw back home. The cut is good. Well, there we go. Welcome words for Matt Slinger as we watch this replay. Up into the block, just slams it into that cut. Three clean discs. Matt, just a beautiful run, unofficially in the low, low fives. Let's talk about how you got here with the hot saw, how many saws you have had to run and the saws that have been breaking and the generosity of other competitors to loan you their hot saws. Yeah, it's always good to have good friends, Dave. Uh, my saw broke about two weeks ago. I was lucky enough that my boss and good friend Derek Knutson uh, let me have his saw for this weekend. I ran that a little too much in practice, I guess, and broke his bolts out, and then uh, Mike Eish came in the clutch, and. Uh, his saw is a lot like mine, and it just ran so smooth for me, so I couldn't thank him enough. Uh, incredibly fast time. The time just came in at 5.04 seconds. This is your leader right now. We're going to ask you to stick around and watch the four more competitors. 
Matt Slingerman did himself a whole lot of good on those three cuts. Let's look at the bottom of that third cut. He was so heavy on that saw, it just destroyed the wood fibers. He didn't cut them, it ripped them apart. Yeah, that's five seconds uh, well spent, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. There's your athlete overall points right there, and he is now the man with the lead. And again, as we say, should Matt, Matthew Coger DQ? He could be the man on top, but he's got to get some help from a lot of other quarters as well to make that happen. But mathematically, Matt Slingerland, the first guy that could come from all the way almost in back, less one. Again, we are running one competitor at a time. We've got two down. Walt Page, Matt Slingerland. Jason Lentz is set to take the stand next. Tell you what, these guys are just turning up the wick in so many different ways. <laughs> here comes, <laughs> here comes Walt Page out into the crowd. He's got a plate of food. He says, you know what? I'm gonna grab a bite to eat, yeah. sit down. It's gonna be watch good. Watch the end of this show. <laughs> Well, he just pretty much got eliminated there by Matt Slingerland's cut. But boy, what a what a great week for Walt Page. Just making it into the finals is a great deal. And making it into the final of the finals, this last discipline of the day. The six who are left. Hats off to Walt Page. Hats off to Matt Slingerland. Oh, he needed that bad. Oh, he, I mean, was, not he was just, not in a good way yesterday. Yeah, not just from the point standpoint of it and, and the advancement standpoint and whatever, but that you just to, to walk away from the semifinal round with a DQ under your belt and have mm. that haunting you, not to mention he's going through, he's gone through more hot saws than I've gone through boxer shorts, I think, in the past couple of days. Like, Sorry to hear that. He's just, he's just rotating through equipment like crazy. Another look at a national record setting effort. No, no, that's a standing block, sorry. Yeah, we're just watching some of the sights and sounds. And boy, the, as you say, Kevin Holtz, this has been a day to remember. This, is, oh this has gosh. been just one yeah. of the most sterling performances by a group of athletes we've ever seen. Yeah, what a day. What an absolute treat. You know, I, you and I have both been around in one way, shape, or another. We've been around this sport for multiple decades now. We'll just leave it at that. And uh, this, this is a, this is a treat. This is an absolute highlight for me. Great crowd on hand in Milwaukee today. What a great place to contest this championship for the USA. There's Jason Lentz getting ready for his turn. Yeah, I've been waiting for this one. Uh, you know, I've talked a lot about how uh, you can see the, the, the mental change, the, the discipline change, the whatever you want to classify it as with Jason Lentz. And I think this is an event where his, his development is really going to pay off. Well, he cuts it faster than five and four one hundredths. He gets right up there to the top of the leaderboard. Right. 
There's his objective marks right there on top of that uh, top of that log. They are. They look about perfect. Executing yeah. not we, as easy as yeah, it looks. We, we saw how well those marks worked out from Walt Page. Yeah. Still, it's good to have goals in life, Tommy, and <laughs> and you will you'll you'll pull off cuts where you'll erase each of those lines and leave all that white material in the middle and warm up your style. everything will go beautiful. And then there's times like Walt Page, you come up on that first cut a little too heavy, a little too sideways, and then it's all damage control after that. Which he handled beautifully, by the way. And oh, he did. Got three complete discs somehow, some way, with a decent time. That's can't ask for much more. Thirty seconds. Throttle lock in place, tether in place, starter cord wound, piston top dead center. Just pushed in the decomp button there with his right thumb. And wait for that last call, turn on the fuel, and send it. Mm. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Bit heavy on that first one, but he seemed to hold it together pretty well. Unofficial time has him in the mid fives. Looking pretty thin at the bottom of that block. Uh, 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 well, that one might be all right. They may have just broke out. Uh-oh. Well, something's amiss here. Flag is down. Rich Halleck is going to tell us what it's all about. The cut is under review. So I, here's here's what I think's going on, Tommy. This is speculation at this point. That second cut, what they want to determine is whether or not he cut the complete disc. So you could see when it when it went in, there's a chunk of wood missing. And I'd love to see that like directly from the end of the log. Here we go, this might give us a better indication. I think on that upcut, he put that saw into the block so hard it tore away that wood. This will be our- All right, let's watch. Uh, oh, boy. I, that that gap is what you're talking yep, about. Yep, but I, I think that'll count as a complete cut because it just broke away or it tore away from the force of the chain. It isn't that he, came in from yeah. the side of the block. Exactly. Like, that would be almost impossible. You, you couldn't come in from a Yeah, you couldn't bevel bias. it off like that. Right, no, right. no, no. I will be stunned if that comes back as an incomplete cut. This one. Yeah, you here's another angle. Here. First cut. I bet, the, I bet you won't even see it because the first cut will be Oh, no, here we go. Uh, well. I, I got uh, it. I don't know. Uh, tell what, you what, I that... saw, what I saw on that second cut, especially when Andy Hall was rolling it around, or maybe it was Rich Hallett was rolling it let's, around. Let's look at it, go back through again. Yeah, that piece just broke out. You see the. Yeah. T take a look at what, see the piece flying out yep. the upper left corner of your screen. Watch it, watch it go. See, what I, what I saw when they were in, of course, I'm up here in the booth and not on the stage as a judge, so what I saw doesn't count for a hill of beans, but what I saw when, when Rich and Andy were rolling that second cut around is it looked like the bottom of that cut was a full cut, thick enough to be a full cut, and that piece broke out on his way into the wood. It wasn't like he... Yeah, if it's caused by vibration or, or yep. proximity, that's, that's, that's not a fault, right?
All right, the judges seem to have reached a conclusion here, and sometimes you act up at. Maybe about to render a decision. Might have another look for it. Nope, nope, we're going to hear about it. After video review, we've de decided it's a disqualification for an wow. incomplete kiss. Wow. Mm. Jason Lentz is having a look at that. He does not seem pleased with that call. Obviously not pleased with that call. I believe he's going to be taking that cut back. There is a system in place with a board of fellow competitors. However, I don't think that is a call that they can go back and review. Okay. I, I, Well, they'll be arguing that one for a few years or decades to come. Right yeah, there is what remember a the super time close when. call. Remember that one, super close, and boy, oh boy. You know what, though? This, again, this is why I'm up here, and Andy Hall and Rich Hallett are down there. Uh, these guys are top-notch judges. They, they know the rules. They know the craft. Yeah, I don't know anyone at, sitting at this table who's volunteering to go down and negative and second guess or take their place. Negative, Ghost Rider. Negative. Yeah. yeah. Nate Hodges next to go here. Yeah, let's Monster do it. Monster springboard. Just do it. Yeah. Like less. Yeah, sure. What? Keep it going. Why not? Let's see, let's have a national record. Let's uh unbelievable. What an unbelievable weekend for Nate Hodges. Oh. And all credit goes to him. He's doing the work. He's getting with the right people. He's getting the right equipment. He had a great interview yesterday and he says, you know what? It just shows you what happens when you dedicate yourself to this sport when you really commit you really invest the time and the energy and the effort which he has done we talk about our multi-generational athletes guys that have been chopping wood since they were four and he knows how to work he's a strong guy you know you, you can't fault him for any of that but to start in your mid-30s and and mount this kind of effort warm up your saw Maybe this is going to be the new trend. That really just, uh, as the story goes, a couple of years ago, it just struck him that, hey, maybe I need to be up here. Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's remarkable any way you look at it. A couple of years ago, I said, oof, I don't think I need to be up here anymore. <laughs> Well, I can tell you for sure that they're going to be studying the, the tapes of that seconds. springboard cut, that national champ, national world, national record springboard cut. They just laid down in our previous discipline for many, many years to come. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Little burp of the throttle and I, ooh. Is he gonna be our second competitor tonight to split that crayon line? Oh man.
There was a, a little blip in that throttle. He had to lift off there for a second. Raquel, it's going to tell us. The cut is good. Woo. All right, Nate Hodges. Unofficially not as fast as Matt Slingerland's cut. Oh, that was that burp in the throttle. It was, I was watching the bar of the saw on the block. He ripped the saw out of his own hands. Yeah, dropped it almost. Some of the guys, when they're not really set up, they'll lift temporarily on that throttle just so they don't overread the saw, you know, without a load on it, without it in the woods. He just flat out lost grip on that thing. There is some stirring backstage. Some of the members of the advisory group having some words with Jason Lentz. Can only imagine what the, like I said, there's some things they can review, there's some things they can weigh in on. There's some things that may end up being a, there we go. Yeah. Nathan Waterfield, Billy Cornelius taking a look at that disc. The uh, advisory board is made up of fellow competitors that are, uh, are well respected by their fellow competitors. It's an elected position. So this could go a couple of ways. I don't know if this is something the advisory board could actually weigh in on. It may not be anything they can weigh in on for this year. This may be something that needs to get looked at in terms of the rules for future years, or it just may be something that it is what it is. We'll take a look at their overall championship points. For Steel Timber Sports, Nate Hodges with that cut right there, taking over the top spot ahead of Matt Slingerland. That's insanity. It's crazy. I mean, he's, he's earned it. He's earned every step. He's earned every point. And you got to think with Nate Hodges, two years into this, he's, his, his headroom, his upside on the, oh, on, on the hot yeah. saw is unlimited. As strong a man as he is, I mean, well, come there's, on. There's certain, like I said, I, I would love to see him get some time and some training on some single buck action. Uh, you know, th there's, there's so many things to learn, but he is like, wow. Nate, incredibly fast to the wood, a bit of a scary situation. What happened when you came down after that first disc? Well, Dave, I, I, I have to say I was going about 110 miles an hour on that one, and it's hard to think back. I know I made a quick recovery, but my fully lost the saw there, a little bit of oil. You know, it's little things like that out here that, that'll get you. One little thing, my, you know, I had a little bit of oil there on my handle, and I was going, giving it my all, and I lost grip. That was, that was a scary situation. Hey, you know, you're in the lead. There's really nothing more that you can do except watch. Can you recap this year, your first year in the Timber Sports, Sports Series? Tell us what it means to you. Uh, it, it's been absolutely amazing. And, you know, to be here tonight with everybody out here hanging out, having a good time, cheering everybody on. I mean, this is the dream. This is what I want to do. It's, it's a great time, and, and I couldn't have asked for a better run. You know, it, it's perfect, Dave. All right, hey, one more round of applause for the new guy, Nate Hodges. Crowd loving it, crowd very appreciative of what this man has done on stage and shown us today. Picked up 15 points as it stands now for that effort, putting himself in second place currently in overall points. Nate Hodges with 5.674. Second place point.
Yeah, he's at, uh, my mistake there. He's second place in the hot saw competition, but uh, his point totals to start with lifted him into first place in overall points. So he did pick up 18 points there. Yeah, he, he's currently, as it stands, I mean, if Matt Coger, Cassidy Shear, uh, you know, all, all DQ out like Jason Lentz did, Walt, uh, yeah, sorry, Matt Coger, Cassidy Shear, the only two left to go, they DQ out. Nate Hodges is our national champion. There you go. I mean, I mean this yeah, is just. He's, he's two competitors away yeah. from being a national champion. Unbelievable. What a day. How many times have I said that today? Well, there is a stirring. There, there's, there's something cooking backstage. I'm tempted to drop a headset and go for a sprint. Roger Phelps. The master conductor of the Steel Timber Sports Series is out here. Head judge Rich Hallett is. They're having a word with Dave Jewett. So I assume we're going to get a report on what's going on. We got that possibility anyway. May hear first from Rich Hallett. We had an appeal on Jason Lentz's cut, the incomplete disc. Uh, we have an appeal process. We have an advisory board that uh, came to us and made the case. The call does stand. We feel the disc is incomplete. We could see the bar on the video before the disc dropped. It's a DQ. Okay, so there it is. They did go to review, and uh, they went to the advisory board, and the call has been reviewed, but the call is standing as it is right now. One more look at that, boy, that's so close. Such a tough one. You hate to see that result in a DQ, but uh, the appeal has been made and denied, and uh, things stand as they appear on the leaderboard. Two more Sawyers left to go on the hot saw competition. Cassidy Shear comes into this one in second place points to start this discipline. Down in fourth place right now. But of course, he still has his cut yet to come. Well, Tommy, we just got a visit. I don't know if he heard me saying, I wish I could go back there and hear what was going on. But uh, big thanks to Nathan Waterfield, not in the finals. He was in the semifinals. Just paid us a visit here in the booth. I stepped away just to have a quick conversation with him. And uh, the ruling is standing as an incomplete disc. There are some concerns among competitors, members of the advisory board. And as I mentioned a little while ago, this may not get, or actually, not may not. This will not be resolved today. The ruling on the stage is gonna stand, but there's gonna be some talk about what is a complete or incomplete disc. And uh, Nathan and I were kind of discussing some of the things that we each saw. It's gonna be an interesting conversation between now and the time Timber Sports gets rolling next year. Absolutely, it sounds like a, a needed conversation. If there's uh, plenty of folks on either side. Again, second place in points to start this discipline as it stands right now. And overall points, he's in fourth place. But again, his cut is yet to come if he can put three complete discs down. Warm up your saw.
Very sharp looking purple and black machine, a Cassidy Shear. Paid a nice tribute to fellow Minneapolis, or former, I should say, Minneapolis resident Prince. 30 seconds. Broke out a whole lot of purple in last year's event and carried it over to this year's he event. He did. I think he put three discs on the ground and recorded time. This he will is, be in third place in the standings. That will net him 12 points. Yeah. It, and that will put him in the lead. It put him in the lead. We talked about this yesterday. I just, I, I don't know how I feel about him running his production mod saw yesterday. I, I well, feel sure like it didn't he, work out. Well, yeah. I mean, that was a whole nother Athlete ready. ball of wax. But Stand to your timber. I feel like a cut Three, on this stage two, yesterday would have done him a whole lot go. of good. Let's see if we can hold it together. Big shove. Bottom of number it. three is a little thin, but I think it's all there. He thinks it's all there. He's liking it. Andy Hall quickly sending those discs to the side. Must be feeling pretty good about it. As long as that inside line is intact, that's going to be a good cut. I don't see anybody getting too upset on stand number one. The cut is good. There it is. New leader Cassidy Shear in overall points with one more. So Nate Hodges is going to ask go. Nate Hodges. Is Nate Hodges, uh, that's as far as the dream goes for Nate Hodges, but a young man who's acquitted himself well. That's There's your leader right there. Minnesota's Cassidy Shear. He actually, Wisconsin's Cassidy Shear. That's where his roots are. With Cassidy Shear, Cassidy, I just overheard you talking to Nate. You said, hey, hey Nate, did I put enough pressure on that saw? What did you think? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, the hot saw is my week of that. I've been practicing a lot. I, I just don't have the experience on good wood and top racing conditions. I, I just wanted to go out and make a smooth cut. I knew that if I could get ahead of Walt, that I would be in a good position to, to get on the podium. I, I can't lay down a 5.1 cut yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was smooth and it felt good and it's a, a step towards faster hot saw runs in the future. I tell you what, look fast, feel, look fast, feel fast, saw fast, you got the mullet going. What's up with the purple saw, buddy? Oh, uh, that's a tribute to Prince. I'm from Minneapolis, that's Purple Rain. If you want to talk about like a confident individual that just exude, exuded awesomeness and power and didn't care what anybody thinks, uh, he, he was the man. He's also a musical genius and uh, yeah, I, I think his music's awesome, I listened to it backstage and uh yeah i mean why not have a purple saw all right the time just came in 5.96 we're going to see if that puts you in the lead you are our current overall leader so stick around and the plot thickens yep then there was one got to figure out all the good all the uh, possible scenarios here with one cut left to go for matthew coger we could start hacking on that right now. As it stands right now, he is eight points behind. He'd be nine points to win outright is what he needs.
Well, there he is, Matthew Koger. One piece of business left to take care of. Job number one, make three complete cuts. You got to do that. 1A saw must start. Don't cut over the line. Don't hit the bottom of the log. Make sure your starter cord is tethered. Help turn the fuel on. Don't forget your initial switch and your decomps. Do you remember to set your throttle lock? Sure, sounds simple. Yeah. You got all your PPE in place. Eyes, ears, leg protection. As Cassidy Shear helped us all remember yesterday, don't point your hot saw at the crowd when you're done cutting. It's just, <laughs> it's a laundry list. Job number three would be lay down a cut faster than that of Walt Page. 6.672. For extra insurance, I try job. to get below the figure set by Cassidy Shear of 5.96. You know what? I just try to win it. What the heck? Yeah. The, I mean, the way the day's been going, let's just win it. Uh, let's see, like, a five flat. Win it. Walk off the stage. Thank you very much. There's that new carbon fiber. We'll call it a chassis. I guess as much as these hot saws have a chassis. Yeah. yeah. Bare bones chassis. 30 seconds. Cassidy Shear currently on top of Steel Championship points. All he can do is stand there and watch. Maybe pace a little bit in the 4x8 box up there. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Six times champ, will it be seven? Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's the exclamation point. No, there's trouble. Uh -oh. There's trouble. Uh -oh. I think I know what it is too. Oh, don't tell me. Oh my gosh. What is happening? Matt here? Koger has come up underneath the log, will be disqualified for cutting over the line. No GQ championship number seven. No championship number seven. The gentleman with Dave Jewett has just won. Oh, who could have seen that coming? Always so steady, always coming up when he needed to. Six years in a row. And it looks like it's going to come to an end. And he faked us out. I mean, it was down at the bottom. But for the moment, we thought eh, over so quickly. Mike Slingerland and I were talking about that exact disqualification earlier this morning. That was most likely going to be the winning time or second place at worst. Put him well over the top, and man, oh man, the end of an era. Comes right here in Milwaukee at the championship. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to Matt. You're Matt Koger, a six-time champion. You were going for number seven. You had three perfect discs. You pushed down so hard on that third cut, the saw at 60 pounds, 60 horsepower, hit the deck, it just bounced up, and then came over that six inch line. Unfortunately, a disqualification. Tell us what happened, then I wanna hear what you just said to Cassidy Shear. Yeah, just I uh, think, you know, I was really going for it, and then I saw there was three good discs there, but then I guess I just got relaxed too soon, let my hand come off a little bit, so I was a little bit out of control, and that let that nose come right up underneath the cross over the line. That happens, you know, like, you know, I've seen it done in the past and and uh, whenever you have to go for it, you know, the, the competition this year was great, you know, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of good guys out here and you can't let up for nothing. You got to keep keep pushing it, keep pushing the envelope. And these guys shown that they can uh, definitely do it. And, uh, I, you know, just before you uh, started interviewing, 
I told Cassidy, I said, uh, you know, let me be the first to congratulate you on the on a Timber Sports win and give them heck over at the World Championships. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, man. Good job. And good job to you, Matt. Cassidy, Matt Coger, six-time champion. He broke the single buck national record today as well. Big round of applause for Matt. Now let's bring it over to this guy. Cassie, you, you seem so relaxed. You did what you had to do. You maxed out your hot saw. You almost broke the, sing, the springboard world record. Tell us what you're feeling. Yeah, I, um, I, I want to yeah, just, just say thank you to Matt. Matt's been a great champion for six years. He's been a true gentleman to sport. Um, you know, in the wood draw today, I'm asking him questions about reading the wood, and he always gives me the real answer every time. He, does, he views me as a friend and not as, you know, like, it, friends first, competition second, and that means a lot. He's a true gentleman, and I don't like to win off somebody else's DQ, but that's timber sports. Weird things happen in the hot saw. And remember, you were disqualified in the hot saw yesterday. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just ecstatic right now. I want to say hi to my... My daughter, Everly, and my wife, Nicole, at home, thank you guys for all the support, for letting me pursue this dream. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy right now. And am I, is it right, you're, this is only your third year in Timber Sports? Yeah, no, I, I the, when, when Matt won his first championship, I didn't even know how to chop a springboard. I didn't own a hot saw. I started to have some chopping success, wanted to make a push into steel Timber Sports. Full bore, and uh, yeah, it's, it's worked out well, and, and the hard work pays off. All the relationships I've developed, uh, Dennis Cahoon, DC Hot Saws. Every time I have a, a neophyte hot saw question, silly stuff, he always answers the phone. Thank you, Dennis. Rob Spry, Spry has given me some great axes. Adam Lefko built me the fastest boards in Timber Sports. And uh, yeah, just all my friends who have helped me out and helped me get where I'm at. The US champion. <laughs> And congratulations, you will be representing the United States at the World Championships. There you go, that's your world, that's your national champion going for a world championship pretty soon, Cassidy Shear. Yo ho! There you go, that familiar cry from the swamps, the timber lands of Wisconsin. Yo ho from this young man. The sign of a timber sports and a lumberjack family for sure. Cassidy Shear there and father a world record holder. And, and what just an, an epic weekend. What an epic just past, I don't know, three, four, five years. You know, like he said, just within the past three years even, we're, the first year we came here to, uh, to Milwaukee, he, he was saying like, geez, you know, I, I really don't think I should be ranked at the bottom of every discipline. And <laughs> Redemption here for it, sure. Absolutely. I mean, what a run. Well, let's take a look at what made it possible. Cassidy said he didn't want to win this way, but it's, he's right. It is Timber Sports, and this is what happened to the man who had his hands on a seventh trophy just almost within his grasp. Yeah, just slipped his grip here at the end. He runs this saw beautiful. He had three great clean cuts. And watch what happens here at the bottom. I kind of, I turned my attention away, and then I saw the saw kind of swing over. You, that little touch, that little touch on the bottom of that log, and you see Matt turn and look, and he knows at that moment that seventh championship was out of his grip. And like I said, the irony of it is Mike Slinger and I were talking about that exact rule and, uh, and some competitors that have objections to that rule, I, I'm on board. I mean, Matt Coger knows why that rule is there, and, and you didn't hear him make any scoff about it. You Absolutely. Know, you, you've got to make your cuts within your allotted amount of wood, and that's a DQ. That's a cut over the line, and that just left things wide open for a guy who has just battled mightily the past three years. Congratulations, U.S. champion for the first time. Maybe not the last time. Maybe. Cassidy Shear. And we have to take a moment to congratulate Matt Coger. Cassidy was right. He has been a fantastic champion, fantastic representative for the sport around the world as a six-time United States champion, Steel Timber Sports. What a turn of events today. How about young Nate Hodges? 
young, Nate, uh, young to us for sure. Well, yeah. Coming in second place today, runner up. Yeah, it's, I. Thanks everyone for being with us today. If you've got a moment to stick around, we would love to have you stay for the medal presentation. Let's welcome right now our medal presenters. From Steel Marketing, Zach Tuckman and Jessica Earhart. National Sales Director for Steel, Steve Merriam. From Duluth Trading Company, marketing Kate Jensen. That's not Kate. <laughs> From John Deere Marketing, Kelsey Luden. There's Kate. We got I got him mixed up. Everybody has made it. Or that's Kelsey. Okay, all right. Now we've got our presenters presenters in place. And just in a moment, we will present our finalists. And now our Steel Timber Sports finalists in order in 10th place, Mark Boquin. In ninth place, Mike Slingerland. In eighth place, Matthew Marks. In seventh place, Calvin Willard. In sixth place, Jason Lentz. In fifth place, Walt Page. And in fourth place, Matt Koger. Now our third place competitor, Matt Slingerland. In second place, Nate Hodges. And now make welcome our Steel Timber Sports 2019 National Champion, Cassidy Shear. Presenting the trophy for first place is President of Steel USA, Bjorn Fischer.
has one extra for you. We have one extra for our president. Come here, come here. Mr. Fisher, come on. And so for the official prost, I hope you had a good time. Mr. Fisher. All right, gentlemen. Three, zwei, eins, prost. Oh. He said the Eins Pro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you had a great time. Don't forget to come back tomorrow. We have the women's championships and we have our collegiate championships. Until then, Auf Wiedersehen.